Welcome to the Independent Characters, episode 235. Adepticon down under. Things didn't quite go as planned for me, but uh, we're going to talk a bit about Adepticon. Uh, I know both of you have gone. I know Aaron went. Uh, Adon was there. We had a big crew this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Diane was Campos was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sky, Craig. Sky, Craig. That's Ivan. awesome. Awesome. So <laughs> we'll talk a bit about that. But before we get into that, this show's sponsored by uh, two people, uh, both Patreons. But I had I handpicked these two, and I'll Fitting. explain. Yes. I'll explain why. Uh, it, Craig Maloney and Jeremy Wood. So as most people who listen to the show previously know, we just came back. Well, I just came back from vacation with my wife when we went to Australia. Uh, we are based out of California. It's a bit of it's a bit of a haul. <laughs> so we went for three weeks. We I, I think I told you nine plane rides in three yeah. weeks uh, to get uh, all over the country. Formula One. I went to the Games Workshop out there. I met with Michael Bask and uh, Emma Bask out there, and um, they run Objective Secured. They're also um, Warhammer Hero Award winners. Oh yeah, so nice. it was kind of nice to just connect. We, Reunion we, of heroes. That's right. <clears throat> um, but. Craig and his uh, lovely wife, uh, Kelly, put and, and their daughter, Michaela, put up with us in their house for a week. They put us up for a week, which was really nice. And it set up all these tours and things for us to do. And, and there was one day where nothing was going on. And uh, Craig was like, I feel bad that I don't have anything planned. I'm like, please don't plan <laughs> yeah. anything. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to have a day off we on vacation. We need a break. Yeah. Um, and, and Jeremy, uh, you know, amazing like uh i got to see all his actual work jeremy yeah. is the reason we have the hall of legends yep yeah uh because we just kept mentioning yeah. his stuff over and over how again. is uh warhammer world down under it is impressive it's impressive i can only imagine seeing those in person i will say the photos do it justice oh that's, that's like good. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, a yeah. great representation of what is there the and photos look incredible yes yeah. because normally yeah. my photos yeah. look terrible he has just a tremendous amount of artistic skill waiting for my dog to go settle down that's the clicking you're hearing in the background uh at least it's not whining yet <clears throat> um but incredible amount of artistic skill he's got a really cool little studio where he's painting and setting stuff up and what he's planning for that Dude, um the boat studio is on, on point uh, yeah so jeremy oh, yeah. is also for those of you who don't know um I, I don't know that there's a particular title but basically he owns a company that manages some boats in the yacht uh, area in 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 the harbor of, of sydney uh for <laughs> ultra wealthy people um, he was able to take us out on the harbor in basically a five million dollar boat that just it was massive, had three stories to yeah, it. Like it yeah. was it was insane. <laughs> it, I've never been on a boat like that. It was insane. And he owns a sailboat. And when I think sailboat, I think like a little thing like this thing's like 80 feet long. It's oh, yeah. like he and yeah. his wife and kid are going to go on. Kids are going to go on a three month trip with this among these islands and stuff. And like he's a sailor. He sailed all his life. Like he's. It was incredible. Like to see him in his element too, when he was driving us around the harbor, um, like he, it, you know, the instruments and everything. It was, yep. it, the boat was mad. I'm like, how do you steer this thing? Doing and it something just, with jib booms. And it pivots. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Like the first, the, the day we were supposed to do it, it, it poured rain and he was going to take us out on a sailboat, but it was pouring. And so he said, that's not very fun on a sailboat, but you know, and the other boat, that he was managing is, um, was chartered out. Right. And so we delayed it to when we came back. Um, but that day that we were supposed to go out, like he and his family took shell and I around to beaches and showed us shops and all this stuff. His kid accidentally shoplifted some kangaroo testicles from a shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most Australian sentence. I think you're going to be able to muster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How does that happen? <laughs> There's a whole bunch going on there. You know, I, I think I'm going to, Josh, you and I will sit down and, and record uh, an hour, hour and a half or so about this trip because it was incredible. Yeah. Um, it was, it was eye opening. Um, and it, it, Australia is a great place aside from the gigantic spiders. Australia is a great place. The size of your face. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did you have an experience? I saw a few. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but uh you know but you know it's that's what i got no close encounters it's got no yeah um yeah 
And snakes don't really bother me, although every snake there is venomous. So yeah. it's like, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll, we'll sit down. We'll talk about it. Uh, we'll release Having that Having listened our, to Dungeon Crawler, Carl, I'm a, I appreciate that you said venomous instead of poisonous. <laughs> yes. There you go. Well, it's like you, you walk down to a beach and there's, you know, it's very much like Northern California beach type of look. There's like scrub that goes right into the beach. Yeah. And, and you'll see signs everywhere that are like, you know, watch for snakes. <laughs> like, right. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's not like California. Yep. I'm fine with snakes until they're in the water. And that's right. Oh, now. that like, would be. It's like scuba diving in Thailand. You just have venomous snakes swimming everywhere next to you. And like, Oh, oh no. Sketchy. No. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> uh, so this episode, all we're going to talk about really is Adapticon. I want to hear what you guys did. I had huge missing out vibes, you know, as I was seeing pictures and stuff from everybody, from the community and everybody. So it was all a lie. It was terrible. He's it was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Let's, let's leap into uh, elite choice and I'll go ahead and go first. I chose uh, Pascal Demnick and his Legio Magna Titan ashes of innocence. Yeah. Now he's since posted another. So Titan, warlord also, I believe, but yeah. holy smokes the level of detail on this Both thing is incredible absolutely incredible and the the mm -hmm. the basing like he has like a little set that he put him on for some of the photos and the basing is so well done just like this is clearly in a, a tremendous labor of love yeah and I, I wow like as a chaos titan it is freaking phenomenal looking so having just come back from adepticon yeah. and therefore <laughs> seeing the golden demons in person which yes. was a thing this year uh wow this this the legio magna titan ashes of innocence here is it the the detail the freehand on top the weathering yep the yeah it's, it's the whole package it, yeah it, it that is a beautiful beautiful the, piece the checkers the streaking grime the water effects on the base yeah. the rust the the weathering like yeah it's uh, <laughs> the, the terrain the freehand on the top of the carapace yeah, yeah. can i tell you i am Wow. Kind the conversion. Of, yeah. I'm kind of terrified of like doing weathering. Like when I'll paint something up and I'm like, it's done. And then like that next step, which is I'm going to mess this all up. You know, <laughs> I just, I know gloss varnish. I know. For me. I know. It's just, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, but then I see something like this and I'm like, I really should do weathering. The fact that all this is brought in at, on a, this is an Adeptus Titanicus Reaver. So the scale yeah. of this is obviously much smaller being an eight millimeter model. Um, all the more impressive for getting all that it's packed beautiful. into there on that. Yeah. And that's, that's absolutely the, like the kind of work these models deserves They they rarely get it to this degree. Cause this is truly, I think something special. Um, but the, the models have that potential and somebody really taking advantage to bring that, take the time to bring that to life like this is really impressive. And if you haven't assembled one of these models, I mean, it is, it's a project. Yeah. Each one is a project. It is not like I can slap together a rhino in, in 20 minutes, like sprue to the table, 20 minutes. I can put a rhino together. <laughs> not these. Yeah. That ain't happening with, yeah. no. with one of these. <laughs> you got to set aside time. You got to plan. You're not going to mass build them. You're going to build one at a time. And that was actually, I mean, my, <laughs> it passed. I've talked about my mental block of getting these Adeptus Titanicus Titans finished into the table, but the notion of each one being a project and just focus on one yeah. and really enjoy doing one at a time. Yeah. That was actually, I, I wish I had started with that mindset. Um, it Instead helps of, a ton. Here's and, my whole army. Yeah. Yeah. And, and never getting anywhere because it's just, sub assembly hell yeah. <laughs> whereas yeah, this right. this is a a shining example of like just one take, beautiful project yeah, take the time do one do it right move on move on yeah. yeah well congratulations pascal this is fantastic just fantastic we were all yeah. blown away yeah yeah josh what you got yep so i went with uh bill morlock and his sons of medusa that he's been working on and specifically the more recent additions to this uh where he's been doing a lot with photography, integrating the models with terrain, and then also using some lens effects, yeah. FX to bring flames and psychic powers and crackling yeah. lightning and things like that to life. Um, I do like the lens effects thing. Yeah. When it first came out, it did get quite overused quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But every now and then it's kind of nice. It's but when you take the time and you're setting stuff up with good light and you're imp you're integrating your models with terrain and the lens, lens FX are minimal. So that, like, I mean, the flame is obviously like very well it's flame <laughs> it, it, it has some presence which it should which is yeah. pretty neat um yeah I don't, it's it's not overdone it's it's a nice balance and it feels very 40k like things being a little bit 
crazy and over the top is very fitting and bill has absolutely done an incredible job with the models and terrain that he's placed this and it's really nice photography too so yeah. it's kind of checking all the boxes for me as a uh photographer miniature war gamer uh etc i'm a fan of bill's stuff in general yeah he's, yeah he's yeah, been he's- doing a lot he's been mentioned he actually has many elite choices at this point Uh-oh. now uh <laughs> might be in danger uh and i hadn't seen anything from him in a while but in the last couple of months i feel like he's kind of really come back out and he's just swinging for the fences everything he's put out has been incredible so yeah the right? sons of medusa yeah. the new stuff's looking so good uh, tangential but part of this picture we talked about this wandering around adepticon how good is this mdf terrain in the background though yeah like yeah. that's that press board wooden stuff and man the the yeah paint job accentuates it so well the lens effects effects on like the lights at the gatehouse and yeah. i'm just blown away with how far it's that technology has yeah. come that it doesn't I, look like the lego laser yeah. cut like, right i hate working with that stuff they've hidden the seams so well yeah. in the design of yeah. this terrain yeah that stuff's really really like nice. just the assembly of yeah. it to me is just it's awful and it's so heavy <laughs> i absolutely hate it but you know who else like really does it well is brian harvey Mm-hmm. Like yeah. He yeah. integrates it into other like rock terrain and stuff. It just looks so his stuff looks so good too. But yeah. I hate working with it. But when I see this, I'm like, okay, but it looks real good. It can look really good and not like everything else you see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not like more GW terrain. Not right. The, and listen, like, yeah, I should shut up about that because I was, <laughs> I was listening to another podcast. I can't remember which, and they were talking about cities of death and, and that kind of stuff from a long time ago. And I remembered back to the days where like we didn't have a lot of city terrain. All we had were like rocks and like this kind of stuff. And that's what we played on. So for us to play in like an urban environment was something like super special. And now it's like, I think I take for granted how much terrain we have and what we can and how easy it is to access it. And yeah. 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 So this looks fantastic. Yeah. It's a great set. Congrats. Congrats, Bill. Yeah, absolutely. Keep it up. Can't wait to see what comes next. Jody, you. Yeah, hot off the heels of Adepticon and some Legions uh, Imperialis. Fif- uh, Julian Apps, 1,500 points of white scars finished up and so good. colorized tokens. Um, yeah. it's how, a, did, how did he do the tokens? Like I, He didn't say, and I. it looks like... paint. Yeah, I'm, I, that's my guess, is is that I it was airbrush contrast paint over the the existing tokens. Is that is that so? That would be my guess. They that, are all just gray, so that it is would clever. It would take a clear, yeah, uh, translucent paint pretty well, and then just seal it up. So it how clever is that? Though? Yeah, yeah, easy answer. And and as I think he said in his post, it it is the answer. Like the yeah. the <laughs> color coding your oh, your yeah. tokens yeah. is is Probably such a up, huge help as we have both done. And yeah, just it, yeah, at a, a quick glimpse, it just it's so clear what you're doing, what your opponent's doing. It's easier to pick the orders. Wow. It makes the game go a little bit faster. Like it's yeah. a it's a quality of life upgrade for sure. <laughs> uh, the and then his white scars are just beautifully done. Like at Legion's Imperialis, yeah. white scars look so Agreed. good, yeah. especially if you're willing to take the time with all those little details and the dags and chevrons of bite marks, which are unique on every one of his vehicles he pointed yeah. out. Also, his basing on his infantry yep. um, in the photo with the, the bases, the order tokens showing, you can really see the base work he's done. Yeah. Really solid, t- really time. solid. Great contrast. That was something that got <laughs> talked a lot about at the, the Adepticon event, I was talking to people about painting and how their forces looked is that's one of the challenges with Legion's Imperialis is you, you really do have to be pretty thoughtful about how you're basing your army just because at that scale, if they're close in tone, it's going to wash out right. huge. Right. Um, I think Ivan, like not long before Adepticon yeah. rebased his he entire re-based army, his entire army because it was too similar. <clears throat> Yeah, the Iron Warriors were too close to the gray of the, the base, gray. so he made a, a kind of a warm brown, and it looks really good. So these white, you know, white armor suits on this it's dark, dark base. Dark but, concrete, yeah. yeah. But then that framing around the edge of a little, of, bit, a little of bit of dry brush or I something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah edge it, it all highlighting on the uh, each of those bases on the edges to really yeah. just yeah sets off what's there's an otherwise excellent paint job. There's something about the white scars at that scale that just, I've seen several of these yeah. now. Isn't that what Austin's doing? Yes, uh, Austin Lynn. Yeah. Yes, Austin yeah. Lynn has that. His looks uh, amazing. Yeah, Avery there's something that. about that scale and that color scheme that really, really works well. I don't know why, but yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. I, uh, as we'll get to in games played, I played against two white scar players at Adepticon, um, uh, and they were yeah, great, this. great looking, great looking armies. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. white just works. 
just works. And then I didn't note down who who painted these, but Shell was oh, yeah. absolutely oh. fascinated with. I'll look it up between breaks and, and we'll talk about it but shell was absolutely fascinated with this tyranid painted in these glow in the dark colors as well uh and just really really loved the whole the whole scheme there there was uh a, another tyranid she was looking at and then this one came up she liked them both but yeah. she was like this is really unique i haven't seen this before i will mention before the next segment as we, as we roll into the next segment, uh, uh, who, who painted this, the name on that. I'm so sorry. Uh, it, I neglected to put it in the notes. That's so hard to Shell. do. Shell there you neglected go. to put it in. The yeah. Notes. <laughs> That's going to go well for you. Uh, <laughs> she won't it, listen. It is I've so been with her for three weeks straight, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever you, That's you know, good point. <laughs> I, I do have to tell you there I'm a very lucky guy. Like I have the perfect partner here and she, um, you know, one of the things I was like, we're going to spend three weeks, in close proximity every day together. Aren't you, is, aren't you gonna go nuts? She's like, no, I, I love being around you, Paul. We had a great time. Yeah. Like, and still, you know, when she had to go to work the other day, it was like, well, this is weird. You're, you're leaving. <laughs> yeah, where are you going? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, what, what are you going? What, I gotta be here alone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was, that was my, uh, Monday. So anyway, you were, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, you were talking the, about the technique. It's really hard to pull this off because the, the normal lighting on the model looks fantastic. It looks great. Yeah, There's, right. it's a beautiful lictor, really well painted or whatever that. I think it's Death Leaper. I think it is Death, Death Leaper. Leaper. Death Leaper. The, to get the, the fluorescent and the ultraviolet paints to work and to read correctly. Double duty. Yeah. And it's tough to get those work. So often when that technique is used or something like that's done, it looks so garish. Yeah. Right. That yeah. in contrast, right. whereas this has been done super thoughtfully and man, it, if this is part of a entire army, that's going to be applied in that way. How freaking cool would that right. be to yeah. just hit the black light? And, oh, yeah, and that would be, sick. and even just is a, you know, cause there's handheld black lights and you could like yeah. wave over things as you're playing or there, there would be ways would to be integrate cool. that into, into the game itself. Robert Garcia. There looked it is. It, looked it up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, Robert. Cause your, your work deserved uh, appreciation and recognition there. Yeah. So. It, this would have been, actually it was funny. I was telling, telling you guys before we started recording that like it was tough because all three of you picked, I was like, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Come on. Thankfully, Julian was there from with an awesome looking army too. But yeah, Robert's death leaper here is fantastic. Great basing too. Yeah. 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 So we got, we're tracking everybody who gets mentioned and you know, if it's not a hard and fast rule, you get mentioned three times, you get into the hall of legends. It's based on the tempo of the work you're doing and you know, our kind of in inner discussion here, but I'd say at the minimum, once you get, recognized three times that's that getting, puts you in the running that puts you in the running for hall of legends and hall of legends people we send special shirt prize to um and uh with name tag and everything once they order the name tags those take forever uh but um but yeah how did the i saw you guys in a picture in a defcon were wearing the shirts during the uh space Hulk game oh yeah 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 they look good yeah, yeah. they look good yeah they look sharp comfortable too yeah they're comfy yeah uh, and they, not uh, too heavy, not too heavy. Right. They breathe well. Yeah. Um, and having the giant logo on the back was obviously good for, uh, some people so, finding us. And coming up there. Good. I yeah. realized from the front, there's no ICs logo. There is not. Um, so it was uh, having a lot of conversations. People obviously would immediately know my name and be like, Oh, oh like, yeah. <laughs> I just show your right arm. The, uh, the right arm in here. <laughs> Work this into the conversation. <laughs> what time? Why is Josh always flexing? <laughs> yeah. Justin's going to have a sleeveless one. That's so right, he doesn't man. have even fewer <laughs> logos. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, these are awesome though. Good. Yeah. yeah. Glad they, glad they went over well. Couldn't be happier. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's take a short break. And then uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll launch into Hobby Progress Games Played. Sounds great. It's been some. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. And uh, let's let's just leap right into Hobby Progress to begin. And I'll go first because, again, I've been out three weeks. But before I left, I was doing some work uh, because I, I wanted to have something for the segment. When I got back. <laughs> Plus, I'm trying to get my sisters a battle ready for for painting oh, i just realized i forgot to bring the uh vash door bits that oh were after. right uh right yeah whenever i say next that's time. all right it's not a hurry on that i pulled them out and just forgot them when i was grabbing all the gear so i um i assembled the sisters of battle exorcist tank nice yeah 
Yeah. How was it to go together? <laughs> Earlier in this episode, I said I can assemble a rhino in 20 minutes. And and that's no joke. Like, I've assembled so many flipping rhinos at this point. And that's not an exaggeration. Like, I'd say 15 if I didn't have to cut it off the sprue. Like, and that's tracks and everything. Um, this model, I thought, oh, it's going to be on a rhino chassis. It's not going to be that bad. This model has so much detail on it. The sisters, like, they went overboard on the details yeah like in a good way i i i like it yeah. that way but my god it it is so um it's not complicated it goes together brilliantly but it is in so many pieces and every time i thought i've got to be nearing completion i would flip the page on the instructions and see <laughs> oh my god there's still two more pages of bits and things and adding this that and the other thing um that like if you're not aware like the, the old one had it was metal the, so you had a rhino with a metal yeah right uh the uh, organ, organ on top yeah. organ yeah. missile gun yeah you know which is just ridiculous to be going with. like this thing does not belong in battle and i and so peak, it totally peak belongs. 40k yes yeah. yes it yes. Is. yes maximum baroque <laughs> this one <laughs> is like every time you add something you're like okay this has to be all the oh no wait now i'm going to add these flying cherubs attached to the thing at the top oh now i got this you know hunter killer missile i put on the side now i've got oh these little bits oh the oh the the smoke launchers come in three pieces you know this is like one thing after another um to get it together but uh i did get it all together i swear i like i had the worst the worst discipline on glue. Oh yeah. Like I've got glue all over the place. Like I've got to, I got to sand some stuff down before I base it. it is, I made a mess out of some of it when I go to do my next one. Cause I only thank God only have <laughs> one more. And, and I tried to do it the other day. Like I was like, you know, I've got some time. Maybe I should start assembling this. And I looked at the box and I was like, no, I'm no. not over it yet. <laughs> not, excited. Not, over it yet. <laughs> not excited for that assembly. I am not. Um, but that's the last one I have to do. So last year recorded, you were talking about the, uh, the battle suits being pretty onerous. Oh my God. Those things too. <laughs> <laughs> so which is winning? So you're loving the, the, the exorcist. So the exorcist was by far yeah. more, on but those battle suits did take a while. It's like a battle suit built into a tank. Is that kind of, the, the, <laughs> you take well, a and, and, and you've got take the, <clears throat> uh, the battle suit torso and <laughs> stick it up. And then on top of that, you put a, a, well, you a pipe organ. The Some sister, <laughs> you also have the sister in there right working the keyboard to launch the stuff or play music or whatever she's doing over yes, there. And. yes little and yes column a little column b and it was funny because i was like about to put it in and shell goes why would you glue that in first before you paint i go oh you're right <laughs> like, i was just gonna ask that about sub assembly do not do that <laughs> um <laughs> you could go insane with the sub assembly on this thing you could literally go insane um, so no, everything <laughs> but her okay. has been, and, and r removing her from the cockpit gives me plenty of access to paint. I think what I need right. to paint in internally, um, it's going to be a beast to paint. Like I'm not huh. even, I'm, I'm in some ways I'm looking forward to it. Like in some ways I'm looking forward to the challenge, but then I'm like, and I have to do two of them. Maybe I should find something else to put in this army. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy, a, sure pack, a pack of Sharpies and you'll be halfway I'm not, done. I'm not doing it. I don't need Sharpies. You don't. You, uh, I do. Need's like got them. nothing to do with it. I, I do just, like them. I just like being done. Yeah, but I, you know, the the AK gold. Uh huh. That's so good. Okay. It's so good. It's so easy to apply. One coat done. That's all. I know. There you go. Yeah. Everybody gave me a bunch of, bunch of crap about the, when I was doing my, uh, my Your chaos stuff. They're all using Sharpie. I'm like, I didn't use Sharpie on any of it. Not actually. a Sharpie in sight. No, no. Not that there's anything wrong with that <laughs> in the That's Seinfeld good. context. Feeling right? a little attacked. No, no, no. I mean, I think <laughs> I use Sharpies <clears throat> once, <clears throat> excuse me. And I regretted it because they doesn't, um, stick as well. I, I have not had that issue. It's like anything else. You there's, there is, once you see there's it, a technique you can, I mean, you can screw up coloring crayons if you try hard enough. I, I wonder if we use coloring crayons. No, anyway. Oh, colored pencils. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the new thing. Uh, it's new products coming out. Oh, it's old is new again. Yeah, the watercolor pencils. Um, but no, I mean, like, 
the the color the sharpie provides is not quite the color i want that's yeah. all, probably the only reason i haven't you know <laughs> gone to using it at this point but um but also i'm able to reach kind of recesses and stuff with a brush better than i can with yeah no there that is no. definitely and there are some on that tank <laughs> oh my god i'm telling you it's good it's gonna it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a fun experiment but I, it's gonna be exhausting i think i think it's kind of funny on some level this is like the old uh, pimp your right exhibit of yo dog we heard you yes. like trim because of <laughs> you working on your chaos army and then now you've got the sisters which are like so we put some trim on top of your trim but, but the sisters don't have a lot of mm. trim so much as they they just have a lot of different details. little details like the Filigree trim is actually I, I, i'll bet you the trim is actually easier than this because at least you're just doing one color and it's a bunch of it uh -huh. you know <laughs> here it's like now i gotta switch to this color now i gotta switch mm -hmm. to this now oh, it's, it's gonna be Parts. it's gonna be glorious when it's done i yeah. can't wait man look i'm looking forward to it yep. yep yep i just gotta do one make sure it's not not one exercise like i gotta do one model completely so i have my get your uh, scheme all dialed my in. scheme all dialed yep. in get your yeah. test models yeah. Yeah. all right Absolutely. what about you josh what have you been working on yeah uh post adepticon i needed a little palette cleanser pre you were saying you were going to knock out your shark shark it on so that yeah you could play. so my my plan was while carla was gone i would finish my shark shark it to get them to the 2k point which they are very close to and i couldn't huh. do it post adepticon i needed to do something else fair enough so i fair decided enough. not to do that and i will wait till the uh, the passion is there and i will absolutely get those across the finish line the army's so close to being done and then as soon as everything's painted to that level i'm going to go in and do all the uh the freehand um, yeah. exile markings which is kind of the maori style uh exile markings and then all the blood effects so like i'm really excited for that step but i want to have everything done before i get, do that step and i'll do that all together it's kind of one one big batch of uh freehand and blood uh which is going to be super fun but not quite there yet um so what i did instead was i uh assembled a ton of uh alien versus predator models these are old resin models from protos games um, so good looking they are uh, incredible models. models yeah it was a terrible game that we played a handful of times and i uh the other one the gale force 9 one is great yeah, yeah which these models would be fully compatible for yeah. uh but the reason i've been doing this is because i have been working on a skirmish rule set for the last like 10 years that I've come back and revisited to. And um, I finally landed about four years ago. It's like, oh, I actually want to port this. It was kind of like a Mad Max near future post-apocalyptic kind of setting originally. And I was like, actually these Alien vs. Predator models are incredible. Like I'm just going to port the game to this one. I'm obviously not trying to publish this to make any money because the licensing fee on that would uh, just it would murder everything. it would take yeah. all the profit out of the game but um super super fun and it was really fun just after adepticon sunday for adepticon we'll get into i was able to just kind of wander around and check out a bunch of skirmish games that were yep. happening in the main hall there and that was kind of really inspiring for me because skirmish games have always been my my sweet Your spot jam. my happy yeah. place um so uh that, that is by the way one thing i really enjoy about adepticon is going and trying stuff that Absolutely. I, I may not even yep. Yep. play, you know, but just trying new experiences is kind of nice. Yeah, 100%. Um, so this this was uh, that that Sunday of just wandering around was really good kind of motivation for me to like, oh, you know what? I've been really wanting to revisit this game and uh, I've been wanting to get the models painted. And you have the uh, alien uh, role playing game that the models I would do. also be really good for to have visual representations when combat and things yes. like that happens. And that's so, as we've been talking about. Um, so these are models that I've had for, I don't know, eight years now and it's long overdue that they they get some paint on them so that was definitely like let's let's make it happen but the game they came with was not not good um it's no great first draft yeah yeah <laughs> there there were some some serious problems with it the they had a plan of doing a war game and a board game and they released the models for the board game and this was the v1 it was a kickstarter like eight years Got ago it. um models were absolutely incredible game needed some work but had some cool ideas in it at the same time uh the war game never came to be because the company ended up shutting down spinning off into something else and that's weird and i think a lot of it was because they lost <laughs> all their money to licensing so like they yeah. made some really cool models and it just never went anywhere gotcha um but i'm happy to have the models and i'll uh, i'll take the rules my own own direction with that one so yeah i would say of of any avp genre licensed models i've seen they i i would say they're the best so the the, the quality of models the folk, that's where the focus was. yes yeah. absolutely i bought a i bought into a kickstarter which was like this ninjas versus samurai mm -hmm. game 
And that was the first time I'd gotten a Kickstarter that like I saw the rules and like we could not figure out the rules. <laughs> yeah. We were just like, this is, and I'd watch guys who were like, oh, this is how you play it. And they're like, oh no, this is not right. You so know, <laughs> this is a model company trying to patch together some rules to right. make you play with it. It's hard to write rules. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and this, this absolutely. Is, and this is why when, and I'm not using that as an excuse, but when people are like, oh, GW doesn't know how to write rules. I'm like, they do. They do, but it's hard. It's you hard. know, yeah. especially when your games are that big and that many people are it's trying hard. to break them, and yeah. you have so many different approaches to interactions between stuff. Yeah, yeah. and so. mindsets of like people are trying to like find the broken combination, and some absolutely. people are trying to play casually, and you want to balance it for both. So That's like, tough. It's hard. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, anyway. Uh, so in addition to that, um, uh, one of the skirmish games that I ended up checking out, played a demo game at Adepticon, was Bushido. Uh, and this is kind of uh, has a lot of mysticism elements of they've been there East Asian culture. They, yeah, they've they, been around for quite a while. They've been around, I think 2015 is when yeah, they kicked they've off. They've been so, at Adepticon before. Yeah, it's been about yeah nine years of existence. And I think they plan a lot of their major releases for the next year at Adepticon, like their announcements and stuff. Um, relatively small company, but it's a, it's a really fun little skirmish game that has a lot of tactical depth and... Uh, nuance to it. There's a ton of keywords and special abilities, so there's a little bit of a learning curve to the game. Uh, but the models are are great. It's really fun. I love how it brings the theme to life. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, after playing the skirmish game, um, <laughs> or playing playing the demo, uh, Sky walked me over and he's like, oh, have you checked this out? And I'd heard good things about it, and some people were playing it there in a little event. Um, at Adepticon. Um, so I, I did end up playing a skirmish game and immediately it was like, oh, this is super fun. Like for, you only need six models. Like I'm in for it. Models are gorgeous. Yeah. Models are great. <clears throat> so I ended up 3d printing some terrain and, uh, printing up models resin. Uh, the ones that I got were metal. Oh, oh interesting. Uh, okay. they, it's a mix between resin or metal, depending on which, uh, faction you end up picking okay. up with. Okay. Um, so the ones I got were metal. I had not worked with metal models in a while, but I, so I've got these, uh, <laughs> the, they're the Kinshi temple. They're kind of void monks. They're all about, uh, kind of the, the end of time and things like that. And they, they work, I think differently than almost every war band that there is out there in the, in the game, but it was, um, really fun. And as I picked them up on Tuesday and I had like finished painting and had them varnished by end of day Wednesday Jeez. so that I could play a game of sky on Thursday. So. That is crazy fast. <laughs> so yeah, it was just, again, kind of part of the palette cleanser from post Adepticon. Like I've just been working on legions Imperials for so long. This is true. really fun to do something different and do it quickly. And, um, just, yeah. And working with metal models and working with organic cloaks and not power armor and tanks and yeah. things like that. So it was uh, it was just a fun way. I have to, mix to say, up. painting that metal demon prints that I painted, like I just did not feel like paint applied as yeah. well as it does yeah. to plastic, <clears throat> even on with primer on it. Like, yeah, it, I struggled with. I it. think that old argument of there was a time when. There was a time we talked about this a couple episodes ago of ew plastic models yeah, and that's like that back me. in the like early nineties. It was like plastic, gross, ooh, metal models. Yeah. And you're charging how much for for plastic, <laughs> right? It's and like, then now there like, was an era where there was like a debate over like oh, but metals kind of got its own charm and the detail, and then plastics. Yeah. And that I think that's done. The I plastics think. have just they, they, they're just what they can do with them yes. now. It's just so yeah. far. In. Yeah. I think now and and resins for small companies yeah. now that the cost is what it is right but there's plastic resins and resin compounds that you can make that uh, it's just it's uh, just better to work with i the last i don't remember for what it was but it wasn't long ago i i built a multi-part metal model and was like oh yeah oh this is <laughs> awful i forgot <laughs> it really is of the seven models it i think really three of them were multi-part and one of them like immediately was like the torso and the legs like i glued it there used some uh, mm -hmm. um uh, hardener to just kick it in there faster. And then it, it like immediately separated. Popped right off. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, so second time is, worked great, but <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyways, it was super fun just to, to do something different. And, uh, it, again, skirmish games uh, have always been a passion of mine. So being able to kind of get that. Yeah re uh, renewed source of inspiration at Adepticon yeah, yeah. and then immediately kind of apply that to, to some hobby and some games was, was super cool. Um, if you, it, it, and you know, what's funny is I've come to realize that a lot of listeners to the show came to 40 K around eighth edition, some, you know, eighth, ninth edition, which is for somebody who's been in the hobby. Now I can say a, a while like that's, that's, it's hard for me to grasp. Oh yeah, that's right. You know, 
Um, so for those people who came in, you've only worked with this plastic and you haven't ever worked with right. yeah. combination yeah. plastic metal models. You lucky. You guys are so lucky. <laughs> oh, those were the worst kids. The predator kid that has like the Swansons oh. were like four or five pieces each. Of no, no. Remember metal. the the devastators, the old metal plastic combo devastators sp oh, for yeah, space where marines. The arm would always fall off. Yeah, the, the weapon was the heavy weapon that you had a plastic <laughs> frame of a space marine and then a metal weaponry yeah. to glue onto the plastic. The those were the uh, land those were land raider crusader. Yeah. Oh yeah, with oh, the yeah. metal bolter, the seventy five pound her cane bolter on each side <laughs> <laughs> that were all individual bolter pieces you had to glue to the it was god it was awful in my hobby progress order, i found one of those just the hurricane bolter oh, bit nice. was in a bits box i was digging through. and the, multi, like, what and the, the metal multi melter that sat oh, on yeah. top uh, insta break <laughs> could never insta get break. It to work. perfect <laughs> josh yeah. you built some other stuff though yeah, so, yeah. uh <laughs> continuing on the skirmish Sorry. game trend uh decided to kick off the old uh, summer necromunda campaign that we've been yes. alluding yes. to so in anticipation of that i uh built up my uh, outcast gang which mm -hmm. these are like the trashiest little hive scum models that i love ever that ever stuff like they're gonna be so so terrible they, they, it's funny because the gang is all about the leader so i actually use the uh adepticon event mini as my my gang leader uh which is the uh victoria miniature nice um and she kind of perfect sculpt for an outcast leader i thought um but uh, like the gang is, uh, completely revolves around the leader. Uh, I have a really cool backstory and the book of the outcast really kind of lends itself to like, you really create this cool story with your leader and the rest of the gang kind of follows suit within those lines. Um, but the, if, if the leader dies, you actually just restart the entire gang. So it's really <laughs> oh, all, that's... all about the leader. So now we know how to mess with John. <laughs> so, <laughs> just gun for the leader. Everybody goes for the leader. Oh, you like, got an upgrade? In the past, <laughs> like Delok and Enforcers with me piloting them have always done quite well. So this one, I'm like, I'm going to I'm gonna try something that's absolutely terrible. And it's going to be a lot of fun, though. I'm doing my Goliath. They get, they get access to some psychic powers out of the gates, which is fun. Like, I've always appreciated that yeah. aspect of 40K universe, like bringing, bringing that to life. So... I'm going to have a couple fun models, a couple acts, uh, just trash taking up space and activations. That's going to be awesome. Um, but I, I get a lot of bodies because they are cheap and not good. So, so that'll be fun too. Having a number of activations like that yeah. though is a tactic in all. Ab and absolutely. Yeah. If you roll well, yeah. they're amazing. <laughs> Any, well, yeah, right? Anybody if rolls well. They're if you roll well, yeah. don't run out of ammo, which is what always happens with me in Necromunda. First shot out of ammo. Dang it. <laughs> uh, yep. So anyways, I built up the entire gang and nice. got the uh, painting starting on those. So they're primed and I got the Zenithal highlights going and we'll start applying the real paint and uh, actually tomorrow when we're doing our hobby hangout. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. I um Yeah, I'm going to do Goliath for that again. They're sitting over there on my desk because I pulled them out and I was like, how do you how do you make a list thousand credits okay <laughs> yeah after the last go round i did chaos cult that's not their official name what's the official name the um oh it's the Har harlots no i don't know there's that they're not they're chaos cultists i did a chaos yeah, cult. yeah but they they man they don't have they don't have the same juice that like Goliath and orlox and asher and vance are and so i was like nope i'm going Oh geez, I'm going Orlock. Classic. Yeah, good. So I banged out an original yeah, Orlock starter set. Uh, I think yours actually, your old one that I gave you. Yeah, and so it's all painted, and then I need to add in the the jump pack guys and the the rigger and awesome. there's some cool stuff. So very Everybody's super been excited, clamoring for the yeah, Necromunda yeah. campaign. So. But, so I was talking with Dan Boyd, him being Mr. Necromunda, um, and kind of bouncing ideas and ha just having a little chat about what kind of campaign we should run for a group that A, is so large, because we're going to have potentially upwards of 14 people. Holy wanna, smokes. Wanna we'll play see. Uh, yeah, we'll see. But... Uh, I wanted to run a campaign specifically that was very flexible. Not everybody has to get together for game days at the same time because 14 adults spread That's out it. across five That's different important. cities is not realistic. That's no. never going to happen. Um, so if we can get uh, a couple big game days that most of people can show up, like that's awesome. That's all yeah. we're looking for. And then <clears throat> we will... Um, you're not you're not fighting over territory specifically. Like right. you're you're building up your base. So I'm going to run the Outlander campaign for those uh, listening and curious. Uh, Outlander campaign. You you actually like the first half of the campaign. You're building up your base, so you're uh, adding structures to it, and structures will produce resources, which lets you do more yeah, yeah. things. Um, and all the rewards for the missions are a you get credit, so you can keep adding to your gang, but also you're getting more of these resources to help you just beef up your base. And then the second half of the campaign, you get to go out and actually. Like 
like raid people's bases and try to get some of their resources and things like that. So um, it's it, it's very flexible and it's good for a, a large group like what we uh, have here. So um, very much looking forward to it. All right. If only we had a kind of big central gathering spot, like a like a bigger game store. Like yeah. Oh wait. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you got Sky hey, Harris. That's right. Harris is expanding. Especially it's very exciting. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, so which should be great for that. Kind of what I was thinking for a, a kickoff. Yeah, I think each, that'd be awesome. Each of the campaign halves was get someone going over at Sky Shop. I think that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, I was going to go on some tangent there, but I forgot it. So good. Let's keep going. <laughs> what have you been up to, Jody? Yeah, All right, some stuff. Uh, I did. I just realized I had to go back and check notes from last episode to go. What did I cover? Yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> right. Um, it does kind of roll I into each other. I did, in fact, finish my four bane blades and finished my army in time for Adepticon. Awesome. Uh, they um, awesome. Legion's Imperialis bane blades. We oh say. yeah, yeah. yeah no, four, no, four regular bane blades. What? It's, it was easy to fly with those. Yeah, I can build uh, a bane blade in twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Get if out. It's Legion's Imperialis scale. <laughs> yeah. Easy. Um, I actually I was cracking jokes earlier about the Sharpie because I did for the first time in many years used a Sharpie on parts of the Bane Blades because it was a they had to match everything else. I didn't want the standard right. to drop at all. Right. But there was also like, no, I need to get these th four things painted. Yeah. And I and it was looking at my calendar. My March was wonderfully, insanely busy. Um, and I was looking, I was like, oh, I have one day now. It's a full day to paint but I have one day yeah. and they got done and I was, and they were at this the right standard. So I got those, those four Bane blades built, primed, painted and cranked out. Awesome. Um, and, and then nobody all, knew they were Sharpie. I, nobody knew. I oh, I'm now. sure somebody did. <laughs> Unless you told them. I, well, I sent some guys pictures just to troll. I think I made sure to get Brian a picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That always, somebody. that always really gets Brian excited. <laughs> Colin too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I should have, dang it. I didn't send one to Colin. Yeah. Sorry, Colin. Yeah. Next time, buddy. The, it, it, we, when I was, uh, I needed a Heldrake painted and Colin's like, oh man, I really don't want to do a Heldrake. I'm like, you know what? Just do the base coating, send it over. I'll just Sharpie. I'll just use Sharpie on all the trim. And he's like, okay, fine. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> got him. Uh, similar to Josh though, got back from Adepticon and after cranking out Legion's Imperialis and then playing Legion's Imperialis for, you know, the event there, which was great. More on that in a little bit, uh, was ready for, for changing up, but it also prior had some ideas cooking that while I was there had some experiences that really um locked in the direction I wanted to go. So total palette cleanser With was Legions Imperials. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well no, like there you, there's a lot of layers here. Like okay. so on Legions Imperialis I was good and I was ready for just step away and do something entirely different hobby wise. Right. I know where I want to go with Legions Imperials, but I also had another project I've kind of alluded to okay. that I'm going to talk about in just a second. Um, that is entirely a different direction. Gotcha. But the palette cleanser I came back to was Warlord Games skeletons. They look like um, Harryhausen stop motion, Jason, the Argonaut Love skeletons. It. They're yes. super, the comedy of them. And I put in the notes here, no small feet. Tee -hee -hee. The feet are separate on these skeletons. So when you, you see kidding? a picture, they're, they're very spindly and like they're, they feel fragile when you're like touching the actual plastic models. And when you glue them together, you, yeah, you have to glue the feet to these little spindly yeah. legs and then you clip a bridge between the feet away later. The foot bones connect to the what bones? <laughs> yeah. The lower leg bones. <laughs> and then the, tor the torso separate. It, they're separate on separate on separate on separate, but it was great to just had Vikings playing in the background and just one at a time, glued them together, nice. got those all yeah. primed up and thrown together. Uh, found I had a gap in my collection of, I didn't have any generic skeletons. And I was like, how do I not oh, have interesting? Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> um, that so was then, the first, that was the first set of models that I wanted when I was running D and D and I'd gotten back from the army. And, uh, um, that was the first set I looked at for games workshop. Cause it was just generic oh, sure. skeletons. Yeah. And that's where, yeah. that's where the whole, they want plastic. how much for plastic? <laughs> they're still actually really good skeletons. Yeah, like, they're not bad. Yeah, funny enough, those those old eighty skeletons, the old ones. Yeah, yeah, with they had nothing on them, and they were they were mostly okay skeleton, very peanut size heads, but otherwise great. <laughs> <Agreed>. <laughs> All right, uh, th so the the project I was alluding to is I I also had been curious about doing a skirmish game with some very very specific design limitations of what I wanted that game to look like. And also found myself really inspired by um, Inquisitor 28, hashtag Inquisitor 28, yep. um, Blanchitsu style of modeling that's going on right now. 
Speaking of plastic models, <laughs> I have had to fight like the purchase urge we've been talking about of wanting to buy. There's a blend of kits that's out there right now from Kill Team particularly. Yep of rogue traders inquisitorial forces just was in the last i think big set yep um and then the adeptus mechanic like the core factions to inquisitor in plastic right now are so good they are they're amazing they're they're incredible models and so easy and to so convert now because yeah. Yeah. it's all plastic and yes. multi-part and and plastic glue so i actively had to like talk myself through going but i have an old collection of the old metal inquisitors from around the 2000s that the 28 mil not 50 the 28 yeah, yeah, yeah the the, the inquisitor game inquisitor right but like witch hunter the yeah. witch hunter codex yeah, from yeah, way yeah. back yeah yeah um i've had a pile of those and there's some of the old 80s kind of oddball yeah <laughs> original inquisitors that are just very strange yep um from that from that 80s era so I really forced myself to go, you know what, if I'm going to prototype a rule set and that's what I want to do, I'm just going to use these old metals I have and, and let myself just get paint on them mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. paint them really sloppy in a Blanchetsu style, mm -hmm. um, limited color palette. Like I was laughing with Josh before we recorded, I, I have like six or seven paints out total for this whole project. And I'm really only using like four or five on every model. So right. they, they really are just like, maximum tightening down because if you look at john planche's artwork it's there's only like three or four colors color, right yeah, even yeah, his full yeah. color pieces right. only have yeah. a handful of colors like browns and reds yeah and maybe some not yellow little black gold. and yellow yeah. Yeah. yeah they're all very um earth tones yeah for the most part there's actually i don't i went looking for it and i could not find it there's a video somewhere of him painting coloring one of his own pieces mm. and he shows how he does it oh, how and it's if i remember right he has four bottles of of ink yeah and that's it yeah. wow and all of the color tones come out of just blending these four yeah i mean he works in his own way so yeah i i've finished 10 of these models i have another five or six that are are ready to go and primed um i'm limit trying to limit myself to about an hour a model of you know again that blanchitsu style of uh, there's a loose roughness right. to right. it right. that i'm trying to embrace um and then like i said i, I also because we also did a little a little bit more travel nothing like yours uh, just a week ago. And on those four or five hours of plane trips, four hours of plane trips, I had a notebook with me and I roughed out what I wanted the rules to do again within this very narrow, um, self-imposed kind of mandate. So, um, at some point, you know, that might be something I, I will type up in a rough form and, and release to the community. It's inspired by anybody who played the old 2000s actual inquisitor game. Mm -hmm. It was yes. a very weird, <laughs> and unique thing that, that GW has never done yep. anything else like it. It was out of character when they did it then. Yeah. Um, it's not a good rule set. No, it, it it's, it's borderline. It's I, was, I was talking bad. to John French about it um, because there was a point where we wanted to cover it and play it. Uh -huh. And I have two copies of Inquisitor rule book right there in the expansions. And I have a ton of stuff. For uh -huh. it. It's, it, as you said, it's not a particularly good rule set. Right. In, in my opinion. It, but neither is Battlefleet Gothic, right? Like I sure. look at Battlefleet yeah. Gothic now and I'm like, oh, dude, this is dated, you know? So Gothic, I would say is, is dated and as critical as I am of it, I'm like, it's a design philosophy of an era. Yes. Inquisitor is just, I don't know if it's even with. good. I don't think so. It's yeah. Just, it, like that's just our, different. that's our take on it. Yeah. And there yeah. are people that love it and that's cool, Yeah. but I don't care for it. But I, I brought it up to John French in one of our conversations we were having. He's like, he goes, oh, why wouldn't you just use the dark heresy? rules right and right. i'm like yeah oh yeah why wouldn't you i mean there's basically a combat rule system you already I mean, have movement and combat movement and combat system. percentile yeah. system yeah. you know and yeah I'm like, oh that's a really interesting point yeah. in some ways dark heresy i see i didn't realize this i i have actually thought this when we've played that i'm like oh this is this is what those Successor rules were supposed it. to maybe, be maybe not right, supposed yeah. to be yeah. but it, there is clearly a lineage yes. there what they were trying to achieve right yeah, yeah. so the my design question is what if you swing the pendulum the entire opposite direction mm -hmm. instead of swinging the pendulum out towards role playing right. swing the pendulum back towards maximum simplified war game yeah, yeah yeah and there was an interesting core mechanic of you would declare your actions and then you would roll a handful of dice and you would resolve that Just series of actions yep, yep could you modernize that idea? Interesting. And, and I've come up with, I have a, when I say beta, that's not accurate. It, it is two pages of notes. Alpha. Yeah. Alpha. <laughs> yeah. That, um, 
yeah, it's it's pre-alpha, but I mean, it's it's Blanchett's who looking scribbled well, hey, notes. If you ever want to give it a try, just let me know. I'll, I'll happily. Like, okay. Well, well, that's why I'm yes. painting up all these models yeah, is to go like, yeah, hey, let's yeah, cram down a table and and ideally, you know, see it, see if the animal works. Yeah, so yeah. if nothing else, it's been a super fun palette cleansing yeah, project awesome. and and to live in these old yeah. models in purchases i also i want to play this what your purchase oh okay i'll jump into that one i, I was almost gonna, bought this i was gonna skip this so yeah at i i have an adepticon it wasn't a rule until this year for myself <laughs> last year Jody, you live in how rules. <laughs> i like frameworks like yes. my brain likes to simplify things the so, same way. Yeah, yeah so if i can simplify down to this is the agreement i've made with myself i can change it whenever it's with okay. myself but okay. this is the the rule i like for me is when i go to adepticon i am going to buy something right like i'm heck i like that rule yeah <laughs> but it's counter because i have like the right now i'm being really careful about when i make a purchase x y and z like right. i talked myself out of buying all those amazing plastic kits right. because i knew i had these metals and blah 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 but when i go to adepticon and i walk the vendor hall not only am i going to buy something because obviously i'm going to buy something but i'm going to buy a game i'm going to buy a game okay. when i'm there okay full stop you know so, i think yeah. That's an interesting rule in a number of ways. One for yourself and like personal, I'm going to have a new game that I come away from this with an experience on Two, those guys have come there to sell like, yeah, and, yeah. and it's a buying know, con it's, for it's, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's like, I feel in, in a way that's very interesting. Cause it's like, uh, it's like anytime I go to a game store, if I'm going to play there, I'm going to purchase something like every time I've gone yeah. to skies and I play something, I'm like, well, let me look around and I'm sure at the minimum, you know, yeah. go buy a few paints or something. Yep. Yeah. Well, Sky thankfully has, a, has all the great paints. So yes, more on like that in a minute. Every game's workshop kit in existence. That, that does store. make it it's easier. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I picked up the game this year. So actually I'm going to jump back last year. Funny enough, we both bought shovel nights. Yes. Like we played with our spouses and then we're the, both of them enjoyed it. We're like, let's play this. Um, so we picked up shovel nights cause it was a lot of fun. And I also picked up I always get it wrong. Steel Rift. It's a uh, Gorilla Miniature Games. Yep. Ash. It's his mech combat game. Okay. okay. Um, oh yes, yes. I know which one you're talking about. Which, funny enough, this year there was an expansion released for the game that he didn't write. He gave. He like oh, gave it, handed it off, and like oh, that was a cool thing. Um, See it evolve. Yeah, and he man, if if you're not watching Gorilla Miniature Gaming for those who enjoy YouTube stuff like this show, um, if you aren't watching. He's gone through a massive revision of what he does in the last eight months, I'd yeah, say. Yep. And he's doing some really interesting new content where he's talking with industry people about not about their game, but about the game industry and the game process of what does it mean to own a game store and what is, how do you fight burnout as a games developer? And mm -hmm. like just some really interesting, yeah. thoughtful yeah. stuff that that there aren't a lot of those conversations happening you know, it's in that way. That that content you're talking about right there reminds me of, of we did an episode on, Oh, you want to write for black library? Like, uh -huh. Oh yeah. I, and again, I thought, Oh, this is going to be great. Like it's insider view. It's like one of our lowest viewed, <laughs> lowest listened to episodes. Cause it turns out not everybody wants to design everybody yeah. or, or yeah. write yeah. a book or, you know, so if you like that, like I love that stuff. You do. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I really enjoy that, Agreed. that in, in yeah. industry insider stuff. So if you want some of that in a different way or just somebody thinking about, the hobby and the game community and the game industry in a little bit different way. Uh, can't recommend enough. So that was my last year purchase was his game. Nice. Um, and some MDF terrain, funny enough that I thought oh, was yeah. really cool from <laughs> death ray designs this year though, was monster flight fight club has released uh, a handful of games and cyberpunk combat zone was the box that I went with this year. Um, that was a Kickstarter originally. Yeah. And it was funny enough. They were supposed to have it there and for sale and they got locked up in customs nonsense. Um, and they said, so what we're doing is we can't sell the game here, but it's, it's literally coming out of customs like today. So we'll get them shipped on the cart and out and shipped out to you at no cost next week. And I was like, that's a, that's, that's a sale for Perfect. me. That yeah. was like, that is the right I answer. I don't have room in a suitcase. <laughs> I can't bring this home. And I think it's a pretty thick box. If it's I a, recall. It's, yeah, it, it is in line with most, um, GW you okay. kind of boxes okay. so it, and it is packed to the gills with stuff it's a small scale skirmish game um actually i bought it without playing a demo of it which i almost never do but my friend were they um, running demos sir they were okay. um and funny enough one of the guys who was running demos that i did end up just chit-chatting with he and i were in sacramento at the exact same time and we're like 
I'm pretty sure I played you at a tournament a few oh, times oh, and like did the like, I think I know you. And then found out it was like, <laughs> oh no, we, yeah. we definitely were in Great Escape at the same era. How cool. Um, so uh, my friend Tom Mason, who is a sculptor that I've had a relationship with for years and is one of the people I look forward to hanging out with when I get to go to Adepticon because he lives back east or Midwest. Um, he His group has been in love with it and they've been playing it and he kind of walked me through and talked me through the rules of it. Uh, also, because so much role playing with me and other games are happening, I don't have other than Necromunda don't have like cyberpunk style models at all. Right. And so I was like, eh, I can justify it. Right, and right. and I was curious yeah. about those rules along with some others. So, yeah, very excited. It showed up last night. Nice. Like the box showed up. Yeah. And oh, I, nice. I read like the first two pages of rules before I had to tap out and call it a night. Um, but well, I, I'm excited to, listen, to see it. We. Yeah. Um, that's a two player starter, right? So yeah. you can, yeah, yep. we, uh, Perfect. a lot of us played a lot of cyberpunk RPG, cyberpunk and cyberpunk 2020, mm -hmm. uh, as, and now it's cyberpunk red right. is, is the rule set, um, which all of cyberpunk 2077, the video game was kind of based on. Right. So, um, I super, and this is right in line. Yeah. With, yeah it's all, it's yep. all Arasaka is probably the yep. villain group. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's, it, I'm the models are super in line. Gorgeous. Stuff. I'll bet they are. And I've they are, the, I've seen the pictures. They are a plaster resin. Um, and funny enough, the guy was talking, he goes, he goes, they're a plaster resin. He goes, and cause you've been around for a minute, not fine cast. <laughs> it's like, well, I'd assume not. Otherwise you wouldn't have said nobody's resin. doing fine cast ever again. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, it, it, and getting to look at the models last night, I'm like, oh, I, yeah, it is. It's, it's, if you fixed fine cast, yeah, that's what it would yeah, look like. This is what it was. And it's just more resin and less plastic. Right. Interesting. Um, so that was my my one no when i go to adepticon i have full license i'm going to buy a game right like and i if i pick up a couple a handful of models you know i wanted the victoria miniatures i've backlogged three or four years of them now yeah. um the victoria miniatures special con exclusive yeah. yeah um another human who i just want to support because what she's provided she's awesome. to the community for years Absolutely. has been amazing so yeah. Um, and then Monster Flight Club as a company really like all the drop terrain that they've been offering for for years, how they got started. Funny enough, I was thinking back to their the first Adepticon I went to. They had a tiny little corner booth that was just the like, here's rocks. And then look at our trees. I remember yeah. our trees. You can take the tops off the trees and yeah. then hide a guy inside and put the top back on the plastic tree. <laughs> and and it was this tiny little thing. And now they're they're uh, got what, licenses one of the and larger booths. doing yeah. awesome stuff. Yeah. So we got back and I started that Inquisitor 28 project and this is the last purchase, but also painting for the bases for the Blanchitsu thing. I had a clear, that was the most clear, like this is what I want the bases to look like. And I wanted them dark because I wanted to offset the dark griminess of the, the paint job. So the bases really had to be dark. Um, and I'd heard about Dirty Down is a company brand of paints, Dirty Down Rust and then Dirty Down Verdigree, um, Anyway, I picked up, I went up to Skies and picked up those two pots of paint and man, in three, literally three steps was blown away with the results. Yeah. So I primed some of the Sector Imperialis and then the, um, whatever the Necromunda, there's the, there's two different urban base, right. plastic yeah, bases. Yeah. So I took some of each, I hit them with a spray paint can of silver. So, you know, use caution because spray paint silver can get, get away from you quick let that dry and then just wet and wet took big gobs of games workshops, technical paint, typhus corrosion, mm -hmm. which is just a dark Brown, muddy Brown with like grit in it, slathered that down and then put a big blob of dirty down rust next to it and just let them dry and came back and was blown away with how yeah. good they look. Yeah. I mean, they look, you showed us the actual yeah. bases and they're impressive that, yeah, for the rust is incredible for no literal no yeah. <laughs> like literally dab, dab, gob of paint, jab, jab, gob of paint, jab, jab. Now it is, wet to wet so you're like letting and if you read the dirty down instructions they specifically talk about like using the edges like water to feather them out if you just paint them on as a brush stroke you probably won't be happy with the results right but if you are willing to put some like clean up the edges a little bit holy cow it's rust i mean it makes rust somehow yeah. it yeah it's, it, really cool. it, it, it's amazing it's, um and the verdigree was really fun too it's very different than if you use the gw nylic oxide yeah um, it's a different look. The two of them look great together. Um, anyway, that, that is what I've been hobbying on. That's your hobby tip. That's my hobby time. Uh, also we got to mention, uh, congratulations, to Dan Boyd. Uh, he's going to be a father yet again. Heck yeah. Second uh, time around. Second time around, which, uh, you know, congratulations. Absolutely. Um, 
really, really happy for you guys. So that's, that's good news. Yeah. It was good to see. Good to see him. More yeah, than that really good to catch up. <laughs> All right. So games played, I haven't played any games workshop games. I've been traveling last three weeks. So haven't done any of that. I did go by the games workshop store in Sydney, which was pretty impressive. It's kind of one of their showcase stores. They sell some forge world stuff there. I posted a picture of, they had done like a model in every color of, of the contrast paints that they have. So you can see like exactly what they do is kind of a useful yeah. tool there. Good <laughs> visual aid. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty neat. Uh, so, um, but I talked to the manager there for a while. He, he was really nice. You know, we, we left and Shell's like, how come you didn't tell him you run a podcast? Like, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't need to. She goes, well, you're not marketing it very well. <laughs> well, you got kind of a point there, but I, I said, whatever, you know, I, I just wanted to see what was You didn't going take on. your t-shirt with you? No. Wow. I brought two t-shirts for Craig though. Cause he put me up. Nice. Oh yeah. There you go. And it's, it's expensive to ship down to Australia. Um, but I did play, I, I met up with Jordan Raskopoulos who used to be the singer of Axis is Awesome. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> uh, we met at, uh, this amazing, game event place uh that has like a tavern attached to it it's called um the fortress in sydney it has like this whole area that's like a tavern like it, it very much felt like a bugman's bar kind of tavern um but even like more so and what's cool is they have like this art on the wall that are like you know fantasy paintings and stuff yeah well it turns out those are like pictures of all the characters and things they fought of the owners like D and D. Oh, cool. Whoa. There's That's two really of these. Cool. Like this place, like I would love to open a place like this. And, and you know, it, it's funny because a lot of gamers talk about, oh, I want to run a game store. I'm like, well, I hope you like retail because that's really all running right. game stores. This would be running a restaurant and a service, you know, but I mean, I, I kind of like that kind of thing, but like there was just that. Then there was like this gaming venue where they held tournaments. And when we arrived, they were doing like a Smash Brothers tournament there. Uh -huh. Massive screen. You can see the picture. There's like this massive screen. There's, um, then there's smaller screens where like each, each of the two competitors are playing. There's like a seating area and, and tables and everything there where people, people are watching the event. Then there's this booth up in this upper level where they, they control all the streaming of the event because they're streaming it online. Oh, wow. Then there's a, 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 internet cafe part of the thing that's all alienware gaming machines there's probably 50 of them you know you went in there there's it's a big place it was yeah. massive i am telling you it huh. was massive holy cow you could play board games and stuff in the in the tavern part of it and role-playing games there were people playing DD when we were there um we played uh slay the spire the board game which is based on a video game um so kind of like shovel knight and we uh -huh. shell had made that reference um, <clears throat> it's a cool little game, but it had just come out in Kickstarter and Jordan had just gotten it like literally two days before. And so, um, she's a big fan of the, 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 um, the video game. Uh -huh. So it wasn't hard to like get like, Oh, this is how the board game plays. And it, it was super fun. Like I, I was, <laughs> what's the, what's the, um, what's the site that sells the Kickstarters? Oh, I can never remember that. Uh, game GameFound game, afterwards. Yeah. Game found. They do a lot of them. Yeah. I went to look there. I'm like, Oh no, that's sold out. Yeah. Like huh? I should have, I should have backed this one. This, game backed was, this one. This game's super fun. <laughs> Shell loved it. So anyway, so we were playing the stupid video game on our iPad. All the way home. <laughs> there it is. But, but yeah, it was fun. It was fun. It was great to catch up with Jordan. She's doing well. Um, you know, we have a, a few fans down in Australia that, uh, that listen to the show and stuff. And Jeremy and Craig, we met through the show. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's incredible the reach it has and the friendships you can develop. Like Shell became really good friends with, with Kelly, Craig's wife and, and, and Craig and, and just felt like really sad that we were leaving. And I'm like, well, maybe we should move here. And she's like, I can't move all the way here. And eh, I don't really want to move all the way to Australia. I don't want to leave all my spiders. Behind. The side of your face, Carl. I can't, can't, can't deal with that. <laughs> it's really just, wow. It's right for the. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that's a big fact. I got to keep my people here. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, it, it's just incredible. This has allowed us the opportunity to connect with people around the globe. And, and you know, whenever I travel, I always try to meet up with, with individuals. So um, met up with a couple people and we'll talk about that in our Patreon episode. But um, it was fun. It was a good time. But anyway, that board game was super, 
Nice. Yeah. So, okay. Well, should we, I'm kind of feeling like we should take a break. We're at an hour. Let's take a break. We'll come back. Then we'll talk games played. Uh, because I think that kind of dovetails right into the Adepticon discussion. Yeah, sure. I, I think so. And so we'll just wrap all other. that into one. All right. We'll be right back. All right. We're back and we're going to, we're going to do something different. This, this go around, we're going to wrap kind of your guys games played, which are, I think primarily looking at this Adepticon focused. Yep. Largely you know, into the Adepticon conversation. We'll just kind of do it as one whole segment here and then, uh, kind of close out the show after that. But I, I, I am, cause I have a lot of questions about Adepticon having not gone this year, which again, for me was like such a difficult decision. Uh, did I make the right decision? Uh, jury still. <laughs> and I did. I mean, like, we, <laughs> nope. It was good. Next year, I tell you what, we'll trade, but you have to. Never mind. No, no. Oh, I didn't mention. I'm going to Nova too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. just bought the tickets to fly to Nova. Nice. I'm going there and support a table war charities. Uh, so I'll be manning the table war charities table and stuff with with Todd. Uh, and, and, and then Todd's going to go off and play some 40 K and then he'll come back and we'll swap it out. Yeah. But I'll be there. Shell will be there. You're also going somewhere else in July. Yeah. With you'll you get you some games to, uh, maybe make up a, for a little bit of that loss of uh, Adapticon. I don't think it's going to, but yeah. it'll, it'll, but be, it'll be cool. It, we're going up to, uh, we're the, going up to Tacoma open for the U S open. Yeah, yeah. For, for the games workshop. U S open. I was so that. bummed when I realized those two dates, I mean, my dad's turning 80 and it's my parents' 60th nah, gotta, wedding in Adderford. Can't skip that one. Yeah. No. And uh, a family reunion. That's an obligation. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing nope. in the uh, the narrative. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing in the the narrative there. So I'm I'm pretty excited about it. And they and I had joined the wait list and they just opened it up and I was able they to open up those slots it. yesterday. So that was a good time. Lucked out. Yeah. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Because at first I thought, ah, I'm not going, you know, but yeah, now I'm going. Shell doesn't know I'm going. <laughs> 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 I brought it up kind of sort of to her yesterday i was like um so there's this thing i'm thinking about going to not telling her i already bought the ticket and like, still fully refundable and i'm like yeah because i know it is and I'm, I'm like um you know when is when is our kid coming down because they're in seattle when are they coming down oh they're coming down early august late july early august i go oh so i'm thinking well they'll still be up there i go well you know i mean if you want to go up there and see, I, I go or you wait a week and they come come home you know, and she kind of like, oh, yeah, let me think about it. I'm like, OK, <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> I had to snatch yeah. the ticket because yeah. otherwise yeah. It, if I don't go, I can. It's still refundable. But yeah. Yeah. So, you know, she, like she's just going to be like, go, you know, but it's yeah. just funny to play stupid games like that. OK, so, yeah, we're going to that, too. But I am going to be at Nova Open. I got to reach out to Jeff. I doubt he listens to the show anymore. Um, <laughs> and uh, 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 hopefully Jeff can come down and, and visit, too. But I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to bring my black legion there and see nice. if I can get some open games with some guys absolutely and, awesome and i'll play some you know uh sk skirmish demos and stuff i love doing that stuff as you have to yeah so okay uh so you're at adepticon let's start with before you even start games played you you guys fly out there separate right separate same day yeah Okay. Yeah, because I had I went down to L.A. So it's funny. The, gotcha. My this is my uh, I'll just do the the, oh, right. the, the picture for my week because early L.A. Uh, earlier in the week I was in L.A. shooting a uh, photo shoot video shoot with a uh, professional female Olympic beach volleyball athletes. So that's that's the first half of my week, and then the second half of my week what, is what a, Adepticon. What a rough job you got. <laughs> two, two wildly different worlds, but it was volleyball. A, uh, you say <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. know this. Yeah, but yes, I, I do. Play volleyball. I'm gonna find On that the beach? picture that I photoshopped, oh, yeah. and it's gonna make the video. I gotta find that. Who, <laughs> buddy? Yeah. Who, who, who are the? Uh, Sarah Hughes is the okay. the actual Olympic athlete, okay. and then um, it was I know the name actually. Several of her friends were coming to help out with the with the shoot, and then yeah, it was with her. I kind of stopped following volleyball <laughs> when like Sinjin Smith and like Randy oh, yeah. Stoklos were the players. They those were the guys they couldn't beat. You know, yeah, yep. that would a cool name, Sinjin. Yeah, Smith. that is good. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty the, badass. Name. Southern California name there ever was. All right. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I had to push, I unfortunately had to drop out of the Adeptus Titanicus, um, singles game on okay. Thursday because my fl flight wasn't supposed to land until noon. Uh, and obviously that event was going to start at like 
nine or something that yeah, morning. Yeah. Uh, so there's no, way I was going to make it for that. So the photo shoot did end up making me drop out for the day, but you know, whatever, get getting paid and had a great, great time down there. Um, yeah. Uh, catching up with some friends in Southern California. Uh, and then, um, <laughs> Ended up having a bunch of uh, plane delays. They had to replace the uh, that's weird the the motherboard on the plane like twice, which is you know. Oh my god, that it still as frustrating as it is. I always think in those months, I'm like, but I'm glad you caught it. Yeah, Yeah. but I wish you'd just tell me, you know what? We're out of Pepsi. Yeah, we got to hold off and fill the Pepsi. And this was the uh, yeah, you know, thirty minute delay. Okay, it's going to be longer. The first one didn't do the fix. Are you sitting on the plane? We're on the plane. They deplaned. Are they deplaned like sixty percent of the plane and then got it? fixed so then they have to like wrangle everybody who's already off the plane and like going to the bathroom and going to get food and stuff like that back onto the plane oh boy and then uh on the flight uh it was actually the girl sitting next to me she was traveling with her mom who was um sitting behind um she ended up like getting up mid flight and then having like, she passed out and hit her head. Oh my gosh. So they were ended up having like this medical emergency in the middle of the flight. And there was really the, the call on the intercom. Like, do we have licensed medical professionals on this flight? And like, is there so, a doctor on the plane? Is there Josh a doctor like, on no, the plane? No, but I really? can take pictures of volleyball <laughs> flares. <laughs> I got that. I didn't have my camera with me. Oh. I, I sent it back with the uh, art uh, creative director. Wow. Was she um, okay? Yeah, she, she ended up being okay. Um, but there's oh, like, there was definitely a moment where like, do we need to do an emergency landing right. now? And like this, <laughs> um, anyways, it was an adventure just getting there, but, uh, wow. everything worked out well. I always find that honestly, like kind of scary. Yeah. I, yeah. Mean, I mean, and you know, I was a military police officer. I would go to you accidents where there never were further away from a hospital than when you're but, a mile yeah. high. But I mean, sky. just that yeah. when people have like a medical thing around me, it's yeah. like, it, to me, I, I could never be a doctor or like a yeah. EMT. Right. It's just, it scares me. You know, I, I feel for the people very badly. Yeah. So yeah, it, uh, it ended up, she like clearly had a cold or something like that. And then that's she all was it can like take. just on her way to the bathroom and pressure and whatever yeah. happened. Yeah. Just ended up just collapsing. And yeah, yeah. that head hit was thankfully minor. So it would, <sighs> did not necessitate, Poor girl. necessitate like a, yeah. a medical landing or anything yeah. like that. But yeah, it was a, it was an adventure. She Getting more, there was an adventure. Probably more embarrassed than an anything. Adventure. You know? Yeah. yeah. Right. But yeah, she ended up just like chilling with her mom by the, um, uh, emergency right. exit, like that door over there, just kind of, I think she was she, just she lying on the floor out. the rest of the flight, really. Yeah. Just in case. I mean, oh man, the news, there's, there's been so many people doing stupid stuff with exits. Like you can't, I don't want to fly with anybody anymore. Uh-uh. They're unpredictable. Uh, I'll tell you about my trip later, but anyway. <laughs> okay. So you get there, got there eventually uh, <laughs> me and Jody were supposed to, uh, we were supposed to land 15 minutes apart from each other and just, but because, grab of, ride, delays. because of the delay, um, Thankfully, uh, you got the heads up about your delays while you yeah, were on yeah. the tarmac. So I got off the plane because I'd been in the got air, the message. Yeah. got the message. And I was like, hey, buddy, I'm not waiting two hours at the airport. Yeah, yeah. I got to get yeah. um, well, well, let's link up at the at the event because yeah. um, our plan was as is, I think, should be tradition. You get off the plane and you don't go straight to the event. You go to Portillo's and you get your your Chicago dog. Yeah, get your Italian beef. Your Italian beef <laughs> and you get that going in you. And then, you know, if Just you're taking the, the mood, the 6 a.m. flight, yep. you're good and hungry by yep. that yep. point. Yeah. Um, that's your one meal for the day. Yeah. And then you're done because you've had all the meats. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that that didn't quite sync up. But uh, while you were finishing your flight, I got to the event and uh wandered in and they hadn't eaten kind of low blood sugar days to, to the fury and, <laughs> and splendor that is Adepticon and then almost walked into Campos who was at the battle tech pods. What? No yeah. way. Yeah. And then they were, that's weird. They had a three. That's, yeah. Shell's, that's Shell's new thing, by the way. So I'm picking up on it. <laughs> what? Like, that's when weird. One thing <laughs> obvious, like always happens. It's like, Oh, that's weird. Like, <laughs> so it was, uh, Aaron, Cheyenne and Campos were about to get in on the Battletech interactive pods, the old school. By the way, when I saw that those were going to be there, that was my first like, damn it. (laughs) First (laughs) level of FOMO. Yes. I was like, oh, I've always wanted to do those. Oh, Oh, it's so fun. (laughs) They're like, you haven't ever done one. Well, that's kind of a jerk thing, but you said it. So yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So walked in and they were like, oh, but we need a fourth. Do you want to go? Okay. Yes. <laughs> They're like, we'll arm. wait for these guys to go ahead of us. And so the awesome. four literally walked in and jumped in with them, threw my bags down, got the, the, the briefing of how to pilot the thing poorly. Um, <laughs> and well, I piloted poorly. Some other people did 
better and killed me a lot. Uh, but yeah, it was super rad. How, like, does it feel like you're in? Oh like, yeah. I, I, Oh my God. So it's, it's the like old, a simulator. The only yeah, thing right? I wish is it had some like haptic feedback. They're obviously older now. So like when you take a hit, it doesn't shake or doesn't anything vibrate, like that. Yeah. But the screen like, does a little, yeah. but yeah, it's not, it's the, pretty, the it's capsule pretty. itself, but it's the old battle tech mech warrior game from the early two thousands is, yeah. is okay. the game that it's running. But it, in a weird way that janky works. tech makes it even more. Yeah. So yeah, your throttle is, is a so jealous a, throttle, is a physical like jet, jet throttle. <laughs> and yeah, you've got your, your cock pilot controls for your weapons and they, they have the controls turned down to maximum simplified. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. But there is a way if you're experienced, you can ramp them up. You can do a combo at it's the beginning. Like when to you're turn doing like a, a driving simulator, do you want to do shifting or do right. you want to just yeah. do automatic? Yeah. 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 Well, there's, there's foot pedals and then there's also joysticks. So the joystick, like you can turn oh your torso, God. but still be walking forward using the pedals, but oh they my. did not have yeah. that by default. Yeah. I think right. that's probably so a you, good call. You weren't doing the torso twisting, which is classic. Um, and when you get done, you get a printout of how you yeah. did. And there's a little, there's a little fictional write up about how terrible you are. Um, <laughs> oh God, I in hope, my case, I hope they're there the next year. It was great. It, it was, was great. Perfect. And they were yeah. cycling through fast yeah. like i like, was shocked how, how long did you play you for the, how many pods were there four four pods okay. wow okay. i think it was seven minute sessions so it's a, it's a good little match it's a good, good yeah, yeah, yeah it was about it was only like 15 30 minutes before you jumped in wow. and, and everybody was really cool that i the the two times i did it everybody was really cool about like oh are you a group of four okay well you guys wait and then or you guys go because i'm waiting for two more people right, and like right, right, right. people were being pretty chill about that and yeah it, and one of the guys in front of us was like oh well you guys go ahead i've played like three times already so oh my god and i'm just solo but you four so, want to go so okay, you go so and campos is like the battle tech guy yeah i yep. how did he come out He's of that man of oh he was very excited <laughs> and he played a lot of battle tech yeah. um i actually one of my last we'll year we could it, not get him away from the battle tech tables <laughs> no nor <laughs> no, this year not this year either um, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah he, he rocked that's it what he's and, there for yeah that's yeah incredible. it was awesome good for him um, he demoed me on saturday that was friday friday the new battle tech so. uh alpha i'd really wanted to play battle tech alpha strike and was curious about it's it a little and, simplified mm -hmm. yeah i think i have a box and he uh yeah they needed one they had a little boot camps running every hour on the hour um and i i signed up for one of those and then they needed one extra and i saw him walking by i was like hey come teach me how to play and so he ended up being my you just got to have a one-on-one -on -one, and then he and I got to go grab lunch, which was a, a cool moment just because yeah, nice. he's a good dude. He's, yeah. Super good, good dude. People. And just hadn't had a lot of time to really sit down one-on-one. -on -one. It was always in gaming sessions. Right. So that was anyway, but yeah, day one, it was, uh, while well, I waited for him to get squared away, uh, you're doing battle tech got yeah. blowed up you were a many warrior. times. I got <laughs> in many lifetimes in many iterations of me. <laughs> ended, I died a lot. Respawned, ended again. Yeah. <laughs> Next uh, time I'm taking yeah, I, that. Yeah, I got there and then we went, we did, uh, in fact, go to Portillo's and got our Italian beef and uh, nice. you doubled down with a dog too. Oh, know, that's, uh, person, I'm but. actually more excited about the dog. Uh, that's the yeah, Chicago dad. Hot dogs are like one of the few things I don't Oh, that's right. So you have that yeah, affliction. That's, I don't like. Every now and then I like a hot dog. We... And then we went to our, got our room squared away. So yeah. now were you at the main hotel? We no, were not. you were not. We were a satellite okay. hotel, which did have a block for Adepticon rooms and a sometimes shuttle. Uh, <laughs> but it was, uh, it wasn't that far away. It was, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a mile, something like that. A did mile you away. feel removed from the event by being in the satellite hotel? For me in a good way. Cause you can compare. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, the not having access to like just throw your bag down real quick right, right. was kind of the bummer but yeah. because we had so many friends there that were staying in the hotel that's like, what i'm gonna say like you could take use advantage of that whatever. but it was really nice to get away and there was you know maybe like 10 other people at adepticon staying there too um to just have some separation from the chaos yeah. and the yeah. noise and let you breathe like, like yeah yeah it was <laughs> really pleasantly quiet at night yeah I'll bet. yeah so once yeah. you were like and i'm ready to go call it a night and and not to say that like the the hotel is noisy like when you're in your room actually it's not but occasionally people walk in right by and, and the energy though is still there as weird as that yeah. sounds no, whereas no, no, you're like right. yeah. you yeah. feel that like oh you jump in your lifter i mean that is an additional cost you gotta lift an uber back and forth you don't have that much to, oh, sure. but yeah, it was like seven bucks each way that's not, yeah. not too bad no it was not barrier pricing on it thankfully yeah um but yeah so yeah, it was actually nice to have that like 
unplug. I appreciated that yeah. more than I thought I would actually. Cool. Interesting. Um, okay. And then the loosey goosey shuttle was sometimes you walked out and there was a shuttle there and they're like, Oh, we'll just take you over. And sometimes there wasn't any call. I think that's just, I mean, it's an interesting point because a lot of people like abandon ship when they don't get a room at the host, the main hotel. Like Mm -hmm. it's good to know. Yeah. Honestly, that's not a, deal breaker next like next year it might even be the go-to oh, hey really? the price was incredible in comparison like so the half main the hotel price is of the expensive. main hotel yeah. and not really an inconvenience and some perks that came with that so all right I, it, we we walked away talking about like i don't know like it would yeah. actually i could consider i could easily go either way i think so i think the go-to is try to get a main hotel if that fails yeah all right yep you know not be disappointed so much or the, for me that's the takeaway yep. yeah. D- depending on the uh, finance situation it's like yeah man or maybe just go just right to save the, a bunch of money and yeah. uh, go just go straight for plan b yeah okay i'm trying uh, to remember thursday night i don't uh, remember thursday, thursday night, night i ended up connecting with cheyenne and campos and aaron and played two two rounds of the battle tech pods also um, nice got some action there and then uh played my first game of the con with avery uh, Austin, AJ's adult son, Avery. Yep. Um, so we, we played a game of legions and Perialis because he was not able to get into the main event. Enough people ended up dropping out because they weren't able to get there. AJ was there. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. God damn. Yep. Swear it God. was super great to catch up with him. Uh, you know what? Tag with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. I, I, two years in a row, AJ and I've had the same thing. We see each other. We're so glad to see each other. Give each other a big hug. How are you? How's life? Good. Okay. Good. AJ, what's That's going the on? Last time I'm leaving. It. Yeah. Yeah. W- was that this time? Yeah. Yeah. I saw him at the oh, end of the, saw I saw him at Saturday. the end of the Legions Imperialis yeah. tournament and it was like, well, I'm out of here. There was a big snowstorm ca- kicking in. So they uh, wanted to get, and they were driving cause they were driving back to Minnesota. W- so who they, else, who else was with them? Avery. Uh, Avery. I think it was just him and Avery. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No Ian. No Ian. No, no Eric. Couldn't ride yeah. a horse down. I knew yeah. Eric wouldn't yeah. be there. Yeah. Yeah. With everything going on with him. Yeah. Poor guy. Um, yeah. So anyways, I uh, got my first game of Legion's Imperialist in with Avery, which was super good to uh, catch up with him and um, yeah, get, get a game. And he was playing White Scars. Um, he has a great looking White Scars army and he had 3D printed a bunch of stuff that is not yet available, okay. which really makes White Scars, White Scars, like jet bikes and speeders and you can't even buy things right like now. that. You, yeah. the, the model kits have obviously all been previewed, but they won't be released for probably a couple months at this rate. Um, so it was really fun a to play white scars, uh, which I had not faced against yet. Cause Austin, uh, with his work schedule, we have not had time to, right. to throw down in the game yet. Um, but especially when you add in all the new elements with the speeders and, uh, white scars outflank a bunch of stuff. And then the uh, jet bikes, like he, his list was so different from anything that I had played against yet. Having largely played with Jody and Ivan, right. um, uh, and just having a very different approach to that. And that was part of my excitement for Legion's Imperials at Adepticon was to see how everybody else was approaching the game. Right. Right. Um, and just the, the sheer variety of lists and things like that, that we were going to see was, uh, I was very curious going into that yeah i mean when you play in kind of a constrained group yeah right and this is what i discovered with 40k like we were just playing amongst ourselves in santa clara and san jose and and then um you know and then the move to hey there's these guys in oakland and all of a sudden it was like oh wait we've been doing this wrong or you know it's it's always helpful yeah to expand your group like that also the the uh the 3d printing was not in a problematic way at all, but right. was, was a common theme. Like yeah. most, because that there's just so little available, yep. yeah. especially in the, the buildup. If you consider not right now, what's available for legions of Perialis, but two, three months ago, what was available for legions of Perialis. Yes. Impossible to get. Yeah, yeah. Like you, like even things that had been released were not available. I definitely felt that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not a super supporter of like 3d printing, that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I understand when, the, the, the stuff is just not available. Like I'm willing yeah. to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, you've provided the game. It's, it's a, it's a, yeah. And now there's an event and yeah. you know, my hope is that come next year. And I don't know that there's a way to tell or monitor it that, that next year it is more of the plastic kits because they're available different yeah. a yeah. little bit. Well, a, a year minimal. later, hopefully <laughs> there's true. more stuff They're all based off the horse there. heresy yeah. stuff. So. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, the, the 3D printing, just for 3D printing of 3D printing sake, the, like the things that people were bringing were beautiful. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah cool no stuff. doubt. It was a, just an interesting like back and forth of like, yeah, I, it's very prevalent and that doesn't surprise me. But at the same time, there's no other option for yeah. those of us who didn't do that. 
it right. also means you were playing with one arm tied behind your yeah. back and yeah. it's it, like it was interesting. white scars get an improvement of their jink save everything that there was were 3d printing what like has a jink save and is improved of that so right. white scars without those things isn't as thematic and also doesn't use that rule so right like, i get it I get uh, it. it was both it, it, it was made both. yeah it made a lot of sense and other, other armories also yeah. Yeah. Uh, i'm actually very curious because obviously for tacoma the tacoma open i'm going for legion the perialis and the combat patrol right. tournament that they're having up there um and um that is a gw run event so 3d printing is a it's hard be no. off the like table it is yeah. not an option there so i'll be very curious to see again what uh kind of um, just forces people are building out there and what they're using and what models have been released between now and then and um, etc. They did drop it. They originally had that as a 3000 point uh, game tournament uh, and they did have dropped it to 2000 points. Again, I yeah. think for just feasibility of people painting forces and getting hands on models makes and sense like that. and time to play yeah. and time to play. Yeah. All right. Um, so that so evening, Legion Imperials. yeah. Okay. That evening when he was playing with Avery, um, I got, this was one of the highlights of the whole convention. Uh, I've had a relationship online, just chit chatting and, and kind of like you and John French, <laughs> just talk and keep in touch and um, have developed a friendship over the years. Uh, James Hewitt and I yep. have, have had I a, knew he was going to be there. Yeah. He so was there with Modifius demoing his, his, their products, but also their, their new game that is his new game, Fallout Factions. Yeah. Um, Oh, I didn't realize he was involved in that because oh, I was yeah. looking at that game a while <laughs> it back. It's very much his baby. It is. Uh, yeah. The, his you studio the, needy cat games has largely become not become, it still exists and it's still doing its thing, but he, he and his partner are the leading force of the in-house yeah. tabletop gaming part of Modifius now. Interesting. So uh, I got to sit and have drinks with him for about three hours of just, and it was just catching up and talking sure. about gaming. And, and I don't know that we talked about Blitz Bowl ever, which is kind of funny because that's yeah. largely where, yeah. where I actually met him. But then, um, it was funny later, a, a Don and some guys were sitting in the, the bar area and they were having drinks and saw me and hadn't seen them yet. And so a Don came over and gave me a hard time. And it's like, Oh, this is James, blah, blah, blah. And later a Don was kind of freaking out. He was like, wait, that was James Hewitt. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I was like, and I wasn't going to do the like, oh, this is, like, I don't know. I don't, it get, was pretty funny. I don't get, uh, I don't get starstruck by any folks like that anymore. You know? Apparently just, those are games. The games he has specifically designed are games that a Don feels very strongly about. So, I mean, and he also gets, he's a Don, he gets excited <laughs> about things. He the, does. the joys of being around the guy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that evening was, was, that was largely my first Which night game there. in particular is a Don attached to that. I don't know. It okay. does, does it matter? I, don't know. <laughs> I just know excited. it's not, it's not Necromunda. <laughs> no, we had, I, I didn't talked a lot about that. Yeah. We <laughs> talked, we had a whole conversation another night about that. I didn't even know James had been involved in the redraft rewriting of, yeah. um, and had some interesting thoughts. We actually talked about that. And anyway, but that was, that was one of, it's always one of the coolest things of Adepticon is getting to connect with, yeah, for sure. you know, I was talking about AJ a little bit ago and yeah. getting to see yeah. Avery and catch up with him. Um, and that right there is the, the, the piece that was the most missed by me sure because i get to see matt weeks i get to see hank i get to see you know damon i get to see i mean todd all, and doug. All, all of us yeah, yeah. Uh, todd and doug you know well i anyway, know you see him all the time like <laughs> todd and doug and amory and dave taylor like ended up dave, talking to dave taylor yeah. oh, yeah. times throughout the, the con no, nice. kept, guy kept running into each other yeah super yeah. nice guy um yeah and just every, everybody else and my my circle has only continue to expand correct, in, correct. You know, especially the last couple of years and that's why adepticon feels like home for me it, it's definitely yeah, sure. a, uh, like a family reunion for yeah. sure yeah. yeah and we had such oh, a, a good, big crew this time which is a good comparison not only the local but just the extended crew of okay yeah. so up there yeah didn't mean to derail that so no, you're but that hanging was, out with hewitt and then finish that because james was maximum jet lagged because yeah Yep. Um, and it was his first time in the United States too, which oh, was okay. pretty exciting. So, uh, yeah. And then bounced over and caught the end of, of your game with Avery and, and wrapped up. Got that was our game. And then I think we, uh, did a early preliminary, uh, perusing of golden demon stuff, okay. right. which Thursday, not a not lot of stuff was there. out there yeah. yet. Um, but it was cool to see before everybody was surrounding the cases. To, yeah. And then and moved some, on to some really cool stuff in there to Friday. Yeah. All right. Friday. What happens Friday? Oh boy. Event. So Friday I wake up at like 6 AM because I'm participating in the Longmore doubles event, which is 40 K doubles with Cheyenne, which is 
This is run by 4 a.m. our time. Yeah. So this is early. <laughs> I am still very much on California time. Yeah. Um, this event was not the best organization wise. Uh, not <laughs> not the most clear on their communication organization. There was actually three different times listed for the start time. So oh, right. we all us. got up early to just in case it was the early time. Um, so I ended up waking up at 6 a.m., like getting over to the other hotel by 630 or something like that. And they didn't update it through the app like here's the appropriate time there was an email that uh said one time there was a link in the email which Mm -hmm. said another time because they've just reused the paperwork from lvo because they run the same event at lvo and then the app had a third time the app did end up being the correct time okay but but who knows who knows when you have three different times that's unfortunate yeah so uh i get over the other hotel uh i have breakfast with cheyenne we just make our game plan like we're just gonna go win no uh, <laughs> good plan yeah you practice Roll your fist sixes. bumps so the event doesn't end up starting till 10. so i'm like four hours later oh my God. ready to roll dice um um our, our first pairing it was cheyenne and i so we were doing our team fist bump so i was playing necrons he was playing blood angels we right. had our, our custom t-shirts on right for those of you watching the video it, there you go. On the yeah. screen here. Yep. Um, so it, it was a lot of fun. Um, we played against uh, two guys. I am blanking on their name and probably honestly, I just couldn't hear it because it was so freaking loud in there. Really? Um, yeah, there were <laughs> our table. There were no chairs. So no, all Oof. games. No, uh, there was maybe like one chair per table and just but the table. We happened to get zero chairs. Um, so that was rough. Uh, steal so loud. You can't thing. hear your opponents across this the, the main table. hall. This is the main hall. Yeah. Wow. So it's that the far right side, yeah. um, yep. left being vendor hall, right being, uh, all the 40 K down there. Um, yeah, <laughs> no shares. I uh, can't remember the game, the guy's names. Maybe he didn't hear it the first time. Uh, but anyway, it was, a, it was a fun game. Um, this was very much set up in a match play tournament format. So terrain was very abstract in that you have like the, the mat, the mats, little squares of mats, rectangles of mats representing terrain more than terrain itself, mm. which for me is just, that doesn't n- work. Not like it, it's making it too much of a this competitive match thing it's like um, when the models themselves are abstracted and re- like removing the the kind of your just integration with the narrative and how the game's happening um and that's it's just it's not how i like to approach the game it's not how i play the game okay and like obviously everything is uh line of sight w- blocking for these blocks so there's just basically these huge line of sight blocking pillars everywhere um and just i don't play the game that way so that for, like for me i didn't deploy with that in mind and it's like okay cool like uh my um heavy destroyers did really well taking out one land raider but it's like their other main target was going to be this repulsor executioner um well, which is on the other side of the board which there's no way they're ever going to get line of sight to at this game because right. of the terrain layout and it's like oh okay like i would have deployed differently but whatever like um that's fine uh, it, w- it was a fun game uh incredibly hard to hear what was going on uh, i will say the convention was that's interesting super i mean it's been that way f- yeah. in that hall for years but and it's difficult to hear but i've never like that's interesting that there were is... multiple large 40k things kicking off at the same time there. Oh, there's one that started at nine, which was, I think the friendly, okay. The friendly tournament yeah. or the friendly team tournament. And then there was the, uh, the long war doubles. And then there was kill team. And there was just a lot going in on that. Wow. Um, Part of it was probably my exhaustion. Uh, part of it was the the noise and the dryness. But like by the end of this game, my voice was gone. And this is like I've been at Adepticon less than twenty four hours, Uh-oh. and I've lost my voice, and it did not come back. <laughs> wow. Um. So like that that was kind of a rough go of the morning. The game was ended up being a super close game. Like it was right neck and neck. They ended up ending the round thirty minutes before they had said. Uh, so we why not the rest right, of the schedule's like, wrong. Yeah. So, <laughs> that, so yeah. to me that's but the plan of the day too ended brutal. up being like we're yeah. gonna go from ten until ten. I was like that's twelve hours. Yeah. And like, why didn't we start at nine and like cut out some of this extra time? So anyways, but so it all gets screwed up. I didn't have a, the best time because of the event itself. The game that we played was pretty The fun. game's fine, but the uh, event was a problem. And I should say the guys we were playing about uh, against were both uh, Imperial Fist. So it was kind of one cohesive army, but they were running two different formations in there. 
uh, just having played in a game of 40 K in kind of a more tournament environment against random people and a team game, especially where you're dealing with multiple yeah. formations, like there is a lot going on in there. Yeah. So I, I actually backtrack everything I've said previously about missing the extra layers of like <laughs> chapter tactics and things like that they're, in they're, this type of event, yeah. like yeah, yeah. even just having my faction, Cheyenne's faction, and both these guys' factions, like there was a lot going on. And not to mention by themselves, team games take longer yes, because absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we uh it was it was a super close game. I think the end of it we had to stop at the top or end of four. Okay. Um, but had we gone into five, like we were on our three objectives, so we and I think we we lost the game by ten points. Okay. But had we gone five turns, I think we actually would have won the game. If not, like it would have been with like a two point game. It was yeah, super, yeah. super close because uh, we had all the objectives at the end of the game. And of course, we didn't get to score that that final turn. Um, were you the last like you were going second? Yes, we were. You almost should have counted yeah. those because at the end of a fifth round, if you're the last player, you're getting. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. So they didn't mm. they didn't count their beginning of turn. Oh, OK. Uh, well, fifth yeah, turn. No, but whatever. like we actually would have gotten some extra points because of positioning and things. Right, right. Um, so anyways, uh, it was, it was a fun game, but, um, that, that environment and, uh, just kind of the tournament vibe to it and, and the losing terrain voice set up and, and losing yeah. my voice <laughs> and, uh, the we, time issues. We opted yeah, time, time is an issue for me. <laughs> we That's opted to not continue in there and we decided, uh, if, well, okay, we're like we we were happy to continue, but we decided instead if Adon and Aaron were on the same page, just because we don't get to actually play each other that right. much, we would drop out and actually just play them go with play the them. list that we had did, and that's exactly what we ended up doing. Cool, so, yeah. Uh, which I'll Cheyenne's bit, a good but, player, though. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like he really understands the ins and outs of his blood angels right so yes. yeah yeah so he really understands like this is how these things synergistically work together for me to achieve these and i think our list but also play styles like we did pair very well like i think yeah. we're both smart players and how we approach the game and more like tactical and like can see where things need to happen on the board right. in order to get the results as far as like get, getting the points but having fun while doing it at the same time um not just chasing a win um but uh, yeah, so we, we ended up dropping out and we, then we did play a game against Aaron and Adon, uh, who were doing their joint, um, gray Knights list, right. um, which, uh, that, that was a super fun game. Do you know why they dropped out? Um, same, same kind of, I think largely because we had asked if they wanted to get a game, uh, and especially like with Adon being in Southern California, right. We by, rarely by get to now. Like yeah. I haven't played a game of 40 K with him in a while. And even Aaron being so close when we're playing games, we're usually playing Necromunda yep. or yep. board games or something like that. Not a lot of 40. How did their Grey Knights do? Uh, I think they they lost their first game, but I think it was a pretty close game also yeah. for them. And they they played, um, from what they were saying, two really, really fun opponents. Like they had a really good first game. Good. Um, but I, I think that was a kind of a narrow loss for them to my recollection. How did your guys game go with them? You and Cheyenne won. Uh, it was super fun. Me and Cheyenne <laughs> definitely won. Um, it was interesting because they, they had two land raiders uh, and a yeah. bunch of like purgation squads, some paladins, some stuff teleporting all over the place. Yeah, they, they, yeah. So they have cool movement uh, shenanigans that they're able to jump around. But the first turn, they, they get first turn and they just kind of rush forward towards the middle. And Cheyenne and I are both playing largely assault armies. So that's kind of perfect for what we need to do. I think our first secondary objective we get is bring it down. So turn one, we're able to kill two land raiders. Oh my goodness. And that is half of their army. Or yeah, like that's a lot of points. 20, in their army. That's more than 25% of their army just yeah. in those two land raiders um, that we're able to take out and we get the points for that. Um, oh so God, we, I would hate you guys so much. <laughs> we we take a very commanding lead on points and, and keep the lead going the whole game. Um, so points wise, the game was always very much in our favor, but we had a great time. Just a lot of friendly back and forth. Very cool. and, um, Adon's really fun to play a game of 40 K with because he, he brings all kinds of extra things like yeah. he has a little mdf prison that he puts in so dice that like betray him <laughs> he throws in this prison and like he's got his battle pa pouch of all the <laughs> dice he's got in there and it's just it, it was really fun to how to, are you communicating at this point if your voice is gone uh 
it I, it was very You're hoarse. It, it was there, yeah. but it was, I, I I was saying this uh, at some point on the con. Like I sounded like an eleven year old kid going through puberty who smokes twelve packs a day at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that was my voice. So yeah. It's like uh, chain smoking puberty, deep and right. gravelly and squeaky at the same time in the worst possible way. <laughs> oh, so I sucks. apologize I'm to everybody so who came up and said hi to me, and my voice was atrocious. Well, listen, I'm glad <laughs> it's back now yeah. because <laughs> we wouldn't have done this episode. We, we oh, had threatened to record on Monday, but obviously you were still in Australia, but yeah, it, it took me like a week to get my voice back. All right. Yeah. yeah. So what are you doing during this? Uh, this was my cruise around the, the vendor hall day. Cause I didn't have anything scheduled. Um, and then ended up connecting with my friend, Tom, um, who my brief stint at doing like box art and, and painting for I, Megacon games. He was the, their lead sculptor and like kind of project manager for sculpting and miniatures at that time. So it's somebody I catch up with and we ended up kind of haphazardly bumping into each other and then spent just a huge chunk of the day hanging out and walking around the vendor hall. And, um, it's an entirely different group of people that he knows that are a lot of, it's the more artistic side of the, the hobby community. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's fun to walk around with him and then meet, you know, Patrick Keith, who does, um, totally bombshell miniatures okay and and all these kind of smaller press people who who their reach is a lot bigger in the community than whatever it is they're producing like i think dave taylor's probably for for our show is is if for this show is is maybe the best example of dave's reach into the hobby community yeah. is huge and yeah. and yeah. deep and deep yeah his what does dave make in the community is, is kind of small and niche, mm -hmm. like the actual product, but he himself has this huge kind, kind of, of coverage. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so in terms of sculpting and miniature design, Tom knows all those kind of people. Gotcha. So it's fun gotcha. to wander around with him and he's always, he's just a, a lovely kind human being. So, yeah. um, it's, he's one of those, like, like that family reunion thing. This is yeah. one of the people like I really look forward That's awesome. to spending time with. Um, and so just really spent the day chit chatting with him and then going in, this was my big vendor hall day really, which is, you know, like I, I tend to walk the vendor hall once, right. Kind of looking at stuff. And then like, I find myself going back each day, multiple times. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, let me, I remember these guys. And then I spent a little more time looking and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not just a, you do one pass and you're done. Right. There's and this no was also the day that I played alpha strike with Campos and got lunch with him, which was rad. Nice. Um, so this was just hang out and visit and schmooze with people I day. Yeah. Um, and then knowing that this was my vendor all day, I also made sure to go get my, the demos I'd specifically been like, I want a demo of this. I want a demo of that. Um, tried to make sure to go. And, and so uh, that was when I went to go see James Ramey through a demo of, of fallout factions, which was great. Um, some really, the guy's got just a gift for taking a few mechanics uh -huh. and then making uh -huh. a really deep and rich experience yeah. out of just a couple Absolutely. really interesting in, mechanics. Uh, Adeptus Titanicus. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. You know, Blitz Bowl is the same thing. You get three actions. Yeah. It's yeah. that's it. It's yeah. like seeing this game somehow. Man, there's so much of the DNA from other games that like Titanicus and Blitz Bowl and brought uh, into Fallout. Necromunda, like mm -hmm. into Fallout. Yeah. <laughs> which is really cool to kind of see it all, all come together. It's an alternating activation, but each character gets two activations and you can either split them or keep them together. Yeah. Is the same company doing the Skyrim game? I believe I feel so. Like it's, what's the name of the company? Modifius. Yeah, they're doing Skyrim yeah. as well. And they have, they have, it's I, interesting because Modifius the, the also game. has a big, uh, the miniature. So the, there's a board game for it that I backed, right? right which we played once and we we're like, eh, Shell's nuts. I, I want to give it another go, but there's a miniature war game oh, for it as well. I did not realize that. Mm -hmm. And the models are sick looking. They're really good. So yeah, and this is new that this, this fallout factions is the first James Hewitt game. Interesting. Like that's his okay. thing. So they had other people doing design before that. Are you a fan of fallout? Like have you ever, really I, I, I'm aware of it. Oh, I'm, like, um, I'm not I'm a huge, huge fan of it. Yeah. And if I'm going to be just really candid and honest, the miniatures aren't didn't my, do it for you. didn't do it for me. Yeah, the yeah. game seems great. It's James. It's designed to be a campaign skirmish play. So there's yeah, yeah. a lot of no, I think parallels to I mean, they have their own yeah. style. Yeah. Yep. Right. And, and, and it doesn't necessarily appeal to everybody. It's a very specific style that for me doesn't do it. It's, it, it's not a lack of quality. Yeah. Right. They're yeah, yeah, quality just the, yeah. The yeah. But that aesthetic is prevalent throughout the fallout games. Yeah. And, 
and the show that's coming out on Amazon, which I'm very excited to watch. (laughs) Um, It was actually pretty funny because he demoed, ran me through the demo and camp house because we just come off of lunch. We're hanging out. And then as that demo wrapped, somebody else started just kind of hanging out and then asked a question and I kind of just faded away. And it was like, it, cause it was like, G- that Homer Simpson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was perfect because I mean, James running me through a demo wasn't, it wasn't the same as like, Hey, I'm selling you the game. Right, it right. was more in lines of like, let's talk about design and why I designed. And like, it's a little bit different conversation. What is a than, demo? What forces were in the demo? Brotherhood of Steel. Mm, oh, you would know this better than I do. I'm drawing I a total blank right know. now. Okay. I'm sorry. No, none it's of like the heavy. I don't think guys. it was. It was, so that's it was more. It was not brother. Yeah. Kind of. So it's probably like some just vault scra- dwellers. Scrap gang and, scrubs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I'm curious. I'm curious about it. Cause I really like this aesthetic. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, I have to check that out. I haven't played Fallout and Fallout too. So I'm oh not God, as dude, into it as it. like the, <laughs> the newer. Yeah, yeah. Having just returned to the world of video games. I am. I am very curious. Um, but yeah, that was my day was getting to hang out with campos in the morning. Um, I slept in Josh absconded early and I was like, Oh sweet. Well, I get to get over my jet lag right now. And I slept in and boy, did I (laughs) I, like for me, I was like, Oh, I have fully flipped and I am good. And I got lots of sleep and meandered my way in for, for lunch. And yeah, it was just a super chill day, but again, a day of getting to getting to spend the time saying hey to people. So yeah, that's Friday. Friday, Friday that's evening, all Friday. we all got together. A pretty big group of us uh, got together for right. dinner, uh, dinner and drinks at the yep. uh, kind of the main hotel, uh, not the bar, but in the in the restaurant area okay. there. Um, and it, it was just a good time of hanging out and talking trash that's and <laughs> so giving trash a Donna good, a hard time. It's the best. Yeah, it was, it was a really just good kind of quality, have a meal, hang out, catch up with friends, talking smack, um, just... Yeah. <laughs> Aaron was there. Yeah. Yeah. And that rules from uh, Blood Bowl sevens, Aaron. Yeah. That's right. You'll understand what that was. Uh, Just (laughs) it was the dumbest. Sorry for the inside joke, but that was the dumbest. Like (laughs) it was just this moment that was great for talking trash to each other. So that was for you, Aaron. All right. So uh, moving. Yeah. I was going to have him here, but he's he's traveling right now. And then I said real quick after dinner, we just went downstairs to the uh, table war charity kind of. The, the get together oh, the that they're right. having the gathering uh, and played a couple games. Did they so, do liar uh, slice? There was dyer slice going. Yeah. I taught cockroach uh, poker, cockroach poker which is a dyer slice, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and cockroach poker Dyer's is always dice. a good one. Yeah. 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 If you haven't played cockroach poker, you should. It's a small game, it's a little card game. Get it on Amazon. Yeah. It's it's fun. Yep, it's it is fun. Game. Simple. Uh, my voice was fully gone there. I was trying to drink some whiskey to uh, burn out the. Uh, Right. The receptors and maybe get a voice back and it kind of worked, but, uh, the punch yeah. at the, the, uh, oh, yeah, that, yeah, they have the con exclusive punches and stuff. Um, and it, it was, that helped a little, but yeah, you were shredded at that point. It was, yeah. it was good. That's yeah. right. That, and that was, that dinner was a lot of fun. That was fun. Yeah. It was a, wow. a long dinner of all just hanging out, catching up and talking. Those were my favorites. Yeah, it was, it was really I'm good. so jealous. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now Saturday rolls around. Saturday's the day. Okay. Yeah, that was the Legions Imperialis day. You're doing Legions Imperialis, yeah. both of you. Yes. Okay. So walk me briefly through, because we're 45 minutes into this. Walk me briefly through, like, how did your, what was your experience? Like, you played how many games? Uh, three, three, three games three each. of Legions Imperialis for the day. Okay. Um, did not play each other. We did. We did. Oh, you did. Yes. Oh, that's because cool. it's a narrative event. And the Horus Heresy narrative events are just wonderfully They're done they good. have the interactive map that's 3d yeah. and uh the guys put on a great oh, they show were using, were they using that so same it's hex the map? same same hex map that uh they yep. use for so the first two days of the event were titanicus based uh which had set to kind of where the narrative was kicking off from for the legions of peril stay to kind of wrap things up for the the overall narrative um and it was a very tight game at that point as far as the overall narrative i think traders were up a point it was like a couple points, points yeah. to 11, something like yeah. that. Very, As very close. Uh, so Titanicus had uh, been very balanced. And then um, Day of Legions Imperialis. Not so much. Swung it pretty hard into the trader's favor. I will say yes. <laughs> to the to the credit of these event organizers, yeah. we started more or less on time. It was a few I minutes late. The time was right. Yeah, yeah. More or less <laughs> on time. But at least the start time was but right. But the start time of like, let's start checking people in and moving through. And the discussion around, hey, this is Legion of Imperialis. It's a new game. Yep. This is a new game to us. 
this is the mindset we want you taking in smart there was a briefing at the beginning not only of the narrative but of like hey you gotta, you gotta set the tone yeah and it was and it was really well done but I also they're very like, appreciative of that part of that poll in that discussion was who has played a lot of games so like some people raise their hands and oh that's really some people handy. have yeah. not and like do you want to play somebody who's very experienced or do you want to not play somebody who's very experienced because it couldn't may lead to a more lopsided game right right if right they don't want to have a, a learning moment or a teaching oh, that moment. was so, that's really cool yeah it was really thoughtfully done for yeah. it for well, a game that is brand new last year their titanicus stuff was fantastic yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they do a great job yep. um not just saying that because josh and i crushed it but. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't hurt um and for participation i was able to get a not a location dice but a reactor dice that's different color like they did last nice. year was a location dice so it's not just all the gold uh titanicus oh, nice. dice. so i did that's I so to, handy get to pick up one of those for my titanicus collection which very cool be very useful oh is that what that was for yeah because you can never did you I got take one because you can never <laughs> yeah. figure out well, if you uh, ever play <laughs> someday <laughs> someday all right well cool um yeah event was great uh three games <laughs> three games my first game was a little bit yeah. weird um and i don't know i i honestly this is one of those like i don't know how i feel about it still so the person i played against um was very excited about the game but had not brought an army so they borrowed an army mm. from somebody else there okay that they didn't design and so they weren't familiar with it and they also had never played the game before they were just excited about they it. were excited about it and read the rules a lot and had a lot of knowledge about you know 40k and other games system, sure. GW game systems but coming to okay i have to tell you right now okay, listen i'll stop you right there <laughs> if you're going to an yeah. event like this you need to have played the game before I do not think that is the time to learn how to play the game, regardless of your experience in other games. I just don't think that's the appropriate environment for that. That puts a lot onto the person you are playing against. Yeah. Who's not there to really teach you the game. Right. Like they're there yeah. to play. And especially when Astartes and Solar Ox play totally different, totally different. Yes. Yeah. And like, the special rules for each gun matter a lot. Yeah. Like going up to this U.S. Open, right? I have played one game with my Black Legion so far, and certainly not my 2,000-point Black Legion. You better believe I'm going to have played a lot more yeah. games with my Black Legion before I step foot in right. there, just because I don't want yeah. to drag that down. Right. You know, I want to be able to speak from... I want, Actually, I played two games, and one game was against Shell, and I realized I was doing a rule wrong that really swung things in my favor. Um and so, yeah, I just, I strongly feel that's the wrong time. Yes. And I, 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 again, I appreciate that the person's excited about playing. And they were a lovely person. And I appreciate and all that. kind enough. And in a game Did setting. Did they tell you right up front? Like, I haven't played a game yet. Uh, yeah, they were walking around asking if somebody could let them borrow an army. Oh. 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 Yeah. It wasn't like they showed up and their friend was like, I have an army I'm not going to use. No. No, you should not be in this event. Yeah. Yeah. No, they I'm were sorry. lovely. They were knowledgeable about the rules to a point, but hadn't taken it through their paces. Yeah. Um, and in a game setting where we knew going in that like, hey, this is going to be a time crunch to get yeah. through your game. Yeah. Um, That's yeah. even worse. I, yeah. I only played two turns. Yeah. Of my first game. That's disappointing. And so it, I think that's true most but a lot of games only went two turns but that, that was my one critique of the event yeah. is that the round times were only two hours and 15 minutes and a That's 2000 tight. point game realistically if you know what you're doing is going to take three hours okay so i, I think the, the big takeaway there for listeners is if you're going to an event one have an army it could be your friend's army yeah, that you're yeah. bringing right fine, whatever but have know how to play. have some familiarity with yeah, yeah. your and, army and it's not fair that's it, not fair yeah it, it it definitely was not the experience it could have been it wasn't a bad experience i get you but it was but not, not what i went to, to do. do yeah right yeah um also did do some eyebrow raising that like in clearly knowing the game better than the person i'm playing there should be some advantage there and started having some eyebrow raises at Again, I limited myself to bringing what was available models wise. Oh, but now you're dealing with a bunch of printed stuff that, yeah. That, and, and was losing pretty badly mm. and going, this shouldn't huh. be happening. It, like, <laughs> I know I'm doing the right things and it's not mattering. Right. They were um, Alpha Legion or Sons of Horus? I think they were Alpha. 
Sons of Horus. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because Alpha. they had the, the <laughs> Sons of Alpha. Alpha? Yeah. <laughs> Horus Legion. Um, they had the, the bolter rerolling thing yeah, going yeah. on and they, that came up once or twice, but, um, yeah, was, was a nice enough person. But again, I think that's the, the framing I want to put on it is it was not the experience I signed up for. It was not, it was the event organizers could have stepped in and said, listen, Hey, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but not. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's weird. It's weird to me. It was to unusual. And, no. and yeah. Okay. So I Josh, how did your excitement first off the new game? It's yeah, sure. really and what I was get, driving and, that. And also right, their yeah. tone of like, just wanting to try it out yeah. and cool. Try it out. Yeah. Let's set up an open game for later. Is anybody yeah. interested in showing me how to play this yeah. game? Because some people had dropped out because they were not able to get they This was a slots. fully painted requirement for this this tournament, which obviously in a new game was there was a push to to get stuff painted. Um, and most of the armies looked fantastic. Incredible. They, was they awesome. usually yeah. do. Yeah. This is probably the same crowd that's doing yeah. the Death yep. This, yep. Uh, yep. Uh, excuse well. me, uh, Titanicus and probably even migrated over from some of the horse heresy yeah, stuff where yeah, that is yeah, really yeah. specialist games sells. yeah people this is not their first game for the most part <clears throat> your first game was fantastic though yeah i had an incredible first game uh, i played against a guy named doug who had played uh two or three games at this point so yeah. still still newer but knew the the framework well enough that we the rules look up were minimal i was able to answer the few questions that showed up or i think we ended up looking up like one or two rolls for the entire game sure. we still only got two turns in just because it was again the, 3, the first game he was newer to it um and uh it just it the first two turns of the game take time the next three turns go very quickly so you are playing 75 percent of the game in your first two turns is that because you everything dies yeah everything yeah. dies okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't pay up some stuff yeah. yeah so uh doug was playing white scars uh and part of my curiosity in seeing what uh other armies we'd bring there is i was facing against a warlord titan which is a huge Whoa. deal in yeah legions of this a lot is of like titans 600 in the event. And, really yeah yeah, yeah. Two i don't thousand point yeah because yeah. people I needed them to pad their points. I it's, think yes, it's the painting. I think more than anything. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was just coming to that conclusion. It's that, and also probably units not available unless you were three D printing yeah. them. So yeah. all. That said, the warlords are not bad. <laughs> no, they're, they're 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 hard to kill. Has it made they, you rethink? Uh, um, for for a fun game, I will. For an event, I still probably wouldn't bring them okay. because they are such an investment of activations and points that I yeah. think you are at a disadvantage for having it interesting picture okay um but yeah a friendly game absolutely 100 percent. i would bring a warlord or even a war master and just like oh let's God, let's dance, let's have let's... fun i don't think war masters are killable in a game i will also say josh every time you dump a ton of points into something like that and have a lower model count it never seems to go well for you yeah, yeah exactly <clears throat> yeah, so. especially an alternating activation yeah. game like that like it, it makes such a, a big deal um so he had he was white scars he had all the jet bikes that were printed he had speeders that were printed in a warlord titan um knowing that we weren't going to have a lot of time to get into those later turns of the game where positioning and like objectives are going to make a huge difference like i just very aggressively just pushed forward. forward grabbed all the objectives and like uh, points were very clearly in my favor had we played a full game like i probably wouldn't have had anything left but you played because the turn because yeah the warlord titan is devastating like first shot of the game is four kratos tanks dead like holy smoke and yeah. kratos <laughs> tanks stick around like they are the hardest thing yeah, marines I'm, I'm glad have on offer, so. they're supposed to. Yeah. yeah and it was, it was very fitting they i think the warlord pushes uh the level of damage output higher more so than a reaver uh for, for that like 200 point difference, I think you are getting more of that offensive and staying power. So I, I think I got the Warlord, the shields were down and I think it had two wounds left at the end of turn two. Wow. So like, had we gone turn three, I probably would have killed it, but he would have just decimated whatever I had left if That's he had super cool first turn. So yeah. it was a really fun back and forth. Points were definitely my favorite, but great game. Yeah. So you, you won based on anticipating that you weren't going to get three, four turns in. I'm just going to rush forward and grab what points I, I can. Yeah, so jumped really on the points quickly smart. and then uh, was trying to focus as much as I could of, I, I, I wanted to kill a warlord. That yeah, was yeah, my yeah. goal. So. Well, that would have been amazing. Thematically, yeah. both thematically and event conscious, you built a list that was built yeah. to do that. Yeah. Like it was it was a, a maximum push forward list. And um, Thousand Sons, like it, 
as interesting as they it sounds like they are really thematically a mobile infantry army like yeah. they they want to arrive in armor they want to dump guys out and they want to grab objectives the psychic powers are very minimal in uh it legions of Pyrrhus is the, uh, right. the one complaint i have of the game is I actually wish that there was just a little bit more of that psychic representation which may come in supplements we'll see um because my special role doesn't do yeah, anything yeah, yeah. Okay. um it's very thematic it just you saved do a guy I'd say, yeah <laughs> I, I might save one guy a game and i was like okay it's on a six okay. uh, my second game was against a guy named david uh who uh, is actually a listener of the show super nice guy a uh, really really nice guy i like him already yeah <laughs> he uh and he had that really cool looking ultramarines army that like oh. desaturated oh. it's kind of this muted blue ultramarines army also had That's a right. warlord titan gorgeous gorgeous army great opponent super fun game um i went into this game and i was like the only thing i want to do is kill your warlord titan. you're just focused <laughs> yeah. on killing titans yeah. which is like the, the worst possible way to approach it but i like knowing that i had kratos they, tanks and spartans that could focus on the warlord and i had all the other stuff that could grab objectives i was like i'm gonna overcommit and it's gonna be awesome and it'll be fun do legions imperials titans detonate like they do in they do in it's Cyanicus? it's smaller but they do yes okay. Okay. um so yeah part of me wanted to uh bring down the titan uh <laughs> did that happen I had we gone turn three again, it would have. I, I think this one I got shields were down and got it. I think it was on its last wound. Okay. Um, so just one more good shot or one more turn of shooting ah. would have gotten it. Um, but he did something uh, really cool with his, his warlord is that he brought some of the graviton weapons, which are incredibly good at destroying structures. And yes, structures they are. are very crucial for troops survivability. Because you put troops so in So he them. just yeah. detonated terrain. Like we were removing terrain That's and cool. fistfuls of my models at a time that, that was, was a highlight of my first that game is same super thing cool. it was so fun and like i had not seen that in the game yet and like i mean i'm literally picking up a piece of terrain and eight bases of guys that all die inside of that thing at the same time because wow i can't make saves because <laughs> well it's a six up i <laughs> it's think like, yeah, for them. it's it's hard my yeah. velt my i lost all of my veltari in one yeah. Yeah. building drop i lost I all like, my missiles uh, in one building and then i lost like an entire tactical uh detachment in another so wow um but it was really fun to see mm -hmm. super fun game great back and forth really really good opponent i would 100 percent happily play david again that if is we ever cool. saw each other again what was your uh, second yeah. game? My second game was against uh, Zach, who was playing Solar Exilia. So we oh, got to have so, a Solar X, Solar X game, oh, which was yeah. a first for me. How, in terms of uh, army build, how different was his? Than totally different. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. which he had a Reaver Titan. Okay. Um, had two, uh, the Marauder Bombers. Um, so the Whoa. big bombers, which are supposed to be the cat's pajamas. Yeah. Um, they'll probably be, will probably be the next thing I add, uh, cause guy has some, uh, oh, to yeah. my legions army. Um, they, yeah. And it was a great game. It ended up being just a total riot of a game. It first turn, it looked like he totally had me. Um, second turn, I very got really lucky and shot down both bombers, oh, yeah. um, as they came in. And then we actually got through the third turn and in the third turn i was able to take down his reaver and when it exploded it took out a gun emplacement that had uh had really been a thorn in my side wow. and there were guys like dug in and it when it blew up it took out a bunch of them he rolled terrible so See, it was one of those out of titan it, it was a what reaver was your it was yeah, a reaver it was it's a, a reaver it's a baby titan <laughs> i also threw uh two it was two vanquisher layman rust detachments and four bane blades shot Holy it so <laughs> they did it in one turn yeah super heavy super but it heavy. was yeah. they had to put uh, some some oomph in it yeah yeah um yeah and it was a case of frankly he uh, i i think he out he made better choices than i did but i made a couple really clutch rolls and he had a couple really bad rolls at it weird time yeah and so it just tipped in the middle of turn two and then turn three i was able to kind of push back wow um and it was so fun to get to play solar ox versus solar ox uh and i asked him when we wrapped up and we'd kind of played back through and had some some laughs um great employ great opponent especially when you have that game of like some really clutch rolls just go yeah, against yeah. you yeah um was well, able to roll with, up it. with an army <laughs> That was a noticeable improvement. Bonus. Uh, uh, Bonus. But we, he'd played Bonus. he'd played quite a bit, so he was familiar, more familiar with the rules than right. I was, and and I had enough games under my belt that I I knew what my stuff did well. Yeah. Um. 
and I'd asked him because he'd largely been playing against Marines. And I said, hey, how do you feel the matchup is? And he's like, yeah, it's uphill. He's like, I, I have a really against hard Marines. time right now fighting Marines. Like my list is built specifically to fight Marines. Right. Um, yeah. And he goes, it, it is like there, there's a because of what's available there's a little bit of a discrepancy right now. It feels like of, yeah. of, you know, the short version is rhinos are amazing transports so, and, and there isn't there. I think as of right now, they're just becoming available is a viable transport option for solar auxilia. So you have to like build weird formations to have table control. So is, it'll even is out is in time. I think early to run events for this game. <clears throat> um, it, I think now, no, it a month ago, yes. <laughs> style of event too. Like, uh, yeah. and uh, the only reason I say that is because looking at Tacoma Open and what GW is doing for this, knowing that it's a new game, people haven't played a lot. They've already scaled down points wise. They're also not calling it a tournament. They're very specifically calling it a uh, a melee. So there's kind of three approaches for players. And this is like, naturally it's going to segment through gameplay. It's like, if you're there to win, like you'll be in the winner's bracket and you're going to get some like probably tight competitive games. If you're just there for the hobby, there's like the painter's bracket. And then there's everybody else, obviously, which should just be like sportsmanship and good times and like some familiarity, but it's not like, they're not selling this as a competitive event whatsoever. And I don't think the game is meant for that. Yeah, but it also feels like it's just not there yet either, right? Like right. you literally can't yeah. buy units. Yeah. 40K, they don't put out units you can't buy now. Right. Right. Yeah. For yeah. a very specific yeah. reason. So it actually. I think they need to prioritize putting out the core box tanks separately. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think you'll get a lot of stuff that way. But also like solar auxiliary definitely need transports and they need transports yeah. that are not resin harvest sliders. They need the plastic draconis right. or whatever they're called and the plastic lighters uh which yeah. are coming they yeah. have shown but uh yeah. they're just not it's just, here it's just interesting i mean like yeah. i i've not known a game like that where it's I, I it's sounding again i haven't played yet it's sounding like it's not mature enough for that kind of yeah there's event yet there's some lack of tools and and i yeah. will say that so for, to move to our third game um i am i will proudly say in the second round of this event i think i was the only solar auxilia or as the only loyalist player who won their game Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It, it suddenly had gotten it, very <laughs> lopsided. Uh, uh, yeah. The way the campaign works, it's not a progressive scoring. So you can actually lose points if you lose control of territories. So going into the morning, it was what, 10 to 11, something it, yeah. like that. End of the second round, it was like 20 to eight. Mm. End of the third round, Brutal. I think it was 25 to eight. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So it, it went real pear shaped real fast yeah. for, for so the loyalists. Good, good day for traders. But. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> it's, there's a fun little mechanic of you have a, a token that during the event you put and move around the map. And there Again, was this like, was the same map. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a, it, and it was like, all right, loyalists who won, go ahead and do this. <laughs> and I like leaned in and was like, That's anybody me. else? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> <Boop. Ooh. laughs> well, I'm going to fade back again. Um, so for our third game, because things were so lopsided and, and we hadn't done it, Josh and I were like, and there was a, like people were pairing like off and it kind of came down to way, uh, system of people had just played that person just the way the map ended up playing in it, uh, earlier pairings had happened that so you guys there was multiple pairings yeah. of people that were going to play somebody they had just played. So we're like, all right, well, we'll just play each other. Yeah. Nice. Um, and Josh, throttled me <laughs> how like, many how many people how many people that, would you say game. were playing in the event i don't i don't uh, think we ever it was said. a 30 person event and i would say there were probably 24 i think okay, i would so about guess six drops I, uh, I would maybe 26 interesting it was okay. a good it's still a good pile but still good there's a handful of people. of people that dropped largely i think because they weren't able to get their a good stuff number of people for a specialist yeah. game that's yes. just out and not Quite and ready. I tell you, the wait list was super long, but because so many people were waitlisted, they were prioritizing painting other things and were yeah, not yeah. Uh, there to jump in for yeah, to take advantage. Yeah, a bit of aggressive. So, I'm, I'm yeah. curious if the rollout next year is way more. I'll bet it is. Yeah, 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 and I think they're they're actually talking to the event guys. They're I think planning on doing two days of Legions and Paralysis and only one day of Titanicus, knowing that it's supported and there's a lot of people <sighs> like so super sad. interested. I'm so sad that a Titanicus is kind of not. I, it's going to be supported. It's in such a great state as is. Like I am fine with that. If they don't come out with new stuff, I'll still play it. I will like it's one of the few games that so I, I would consider quote unquote dead, yeah. but I'm like, I'm still in. 
It's, like I haven't played enough. It's of this. a complete game. It's all it needs it's to be. Super good. Yeah. It, there was really high interest. Like it was every round had people walking up yeah. and being yeah. and asking questions oh, about curious the game. About and yeah. yeah, people were excited. The about The terrain it, was, was really incredible. Fun. The armies oh were God, incredible. Tables are uh, yeah, if you guys aren't watching the video, check it out at least for some of the game plate section here because like the photos that we have of uh, the game and the terrain and, yeah. and they did an incredible job of integrating 3D prints with some buildings and some rocks and really good variety of stuff. The mm -hmm. table that our third game that we played on oh, the giant crane with Avery. Yeah. Giant crane with like a tank track wow. thing that was taking up, I don't know, 10% of the board just for this one giant, like current, uh, excavation. It crane caught thing. Dave's like, attention. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah <laughs> he was, uh, had, I think hatching some plans around Dave's it. Dave's commissioning to... somebody to make a full size version of wow. this thing, which is going to be the size of a table. <laughs> yeah. It's a, a <laughs> yeah. table size tractor. Uh, and incredible. then from there we grabbed a very quick bite Yeah, and, uh, and got over to, the basement of doom fellas. basement of death basement of death yeah they talked about you guys on their their podcast oh yeah yeah they were like jody's terrible <laughs> yeah. i was that <laughs> night he was <laughs> no actually they, they talked about about uh uh i lived bur bourbon <laughs> yeah. bourbon yeah whiskey yep. there they was sharing bourbon we're, we're you. drinking some yeah. bourbon heard you were a bourbon guy yeah. and oh or, i tracked down a bottle of it it yeah. was a that great was, bottle yeah, very about. drinkable but yeah. uh yeah so basement of death do the 3d space hulk thing we've yeah. talked about forever i listened to their coverage of their own event so yeah. it was kind of interesting nice. to hear kind of behind the scenes and and how they they did it but it was a whole new setup now it's a different scenario yeah. and everything they've yeah redone all the models Giant all the all the terrain thunderhawk sitting in the yeah. middle you are uh, escaping the inquisitors inquisitors ship that has been overrun by gene Steelers now and the uh thunderhawk in the middle is your your right your escape as, pretty sick as they detonate the uh the ship behind you that's yeah, pretty you cool fight your way to yeah, the ship so yeah. the scenario is cool yeah yeah right. really cool scenario uh i did amazing yeah. I had a great time and then I had some a, other people did okay. I got there. <laughs> uh Chaplain Tadalus representing again. Yeah. Oh, I heard. Yeah, he was I, right I, across from me. He flew us out. He flew us out. That's right. That's right. I texted I, you. Yeah, That's you right. texted me. I'm in Australia. I get this text. Hey, does uh does Chaplain Tadalus know how to fly a Thunderhawk? And I just reply, <laughs> he's an expert Thunderhawk pilot. <laughs> uh yeah. I didn't even know what you were doing. I'm just like, yeah, he's an expert Thunderhawk. There's nothing uh, he can't do. <laughs> so for our, for folks listening, it is all new. Yeah. Like the terrain is entirely it's all new. printed. Every yeah. Marine Every is Terminator. primaris Terminator yep. of oh, so new. Yep. It is. It, it, and, and it is still the same amazing, yep. just great experience. Um, and when we, the, the guys we got to play with was just such a cool group of guys. Yeah, yeah. And had they played before? Some had, some had not. That's great. Yeah, the, uh, blanking on his <coughs> name that who actually supplied the the bourbon. Uh, super nice guy. Yeah, he plays with terrible. them a lot. I'm blanking on the name right now. I'm, I apologize for that. But uh, he actually plays with the basement of guy basement death of death guys death. a lot and has helped them do a lot of play testing to bring this iteration. Very cool. So they actually kicked it into hard mode for, oh, for our group, knowing that he was part of this and that ramped it up and. He already paid the price of that. In, so. in general, <laughs> it's terrible. It was allegedly was just terrible blip luck yeah. that I got. You got it. It was just hard in the beginning. Like so, yeah. out the gate, it was just three pure strains, three pure oh. strains, three pure strains. Some other people were killing termigants, you know, that oh. might be sitting next to me. <laughs> no, yeah. if you were able to get past the termigants, way to go. Well, I had to kill two, two of the, uh, what, one, one, one Lictor, one Ravener, a bunch of pure strains. Yeah, and whatever. Yeah. We're all impressed. Yeah, the thing I really <laughs> I didn't love, even use a single fuel of my heavy flamer. I'm just That's glad enough. you you lived. The this thing time. I love <laughs> about I earned that, my sticker that event last year. They, I died. Is, this, is it the same sticker? Though? It is. Yeah, nah. yeah, yeah. The thing I love about that event though is that they are great at gearing it towards. Here's people who've never played before. Yeah, here's yeah. a mix of people. Here's people who know what they're doing, and and, <laughs> and always make it fun. They're the greatest group of guys yeah, that run that yeah. and, and the level of commitment that they do to run that event year after year i cannot thank them enough yeah. for what they do and I, and again not only the dinner like that you guys had that i super upset i missed the battle tech pod but this is the thing i always yeah always always yeah. we go to 
Well, and um, testament to it is, is it was <clears throat> gone yeah. immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. So I got to give, we uh, should have shut huge... up about it on the show <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I, I already sent Troy a message, but thank yeah. Thanks to Troy and Ben and John and those guys for letting it. This was a special session they were putting on yeah, in addition to, that. um, which they're already the exhausted radio. running. Yeah. Yeah. And so huge, huge thanks for them for letting us in. Uh, Raph was in our group too. Uh, nice. who's a huge kind of champion of our community, especially on the discord side nice. of things. Yep. Um, like great to meet him in person yep. and, um, uh, cool just to all bring, bring all these great guys together for one. I know huge Aaron and Don like got that. in a game yeah. of it. Yeah. I, like I'm glad everybody got to, to well, do it. I was glad I was dying because it gave them something to heckle. Yeah. yeah. That's why I started. That's why I started. Because they came over and hung yeah. out with you guys, right? Yeah. 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 I was, it was, it was great to just watch. I'll my never guys forget. Get off. I'll, I'll never forget last year when Shell was like, well, can I play the Gene Steelers? And they're like, yeah. And then yeah. she just went after Josh She just so hard. destroyed me. <laughs> So every time she'd kill somebody, she'd cackle. Yep. It was, it's great, man. I'm, I'm jealous that I didn't get to do the un inaugural new mission. Yeah, it was super but, fun. But, uh, but you know, next year, there's, next year. there's always next there's year. There's always next year. So, yeah. and those guys have been like, Shell wanted to run an event like that yeah. at KublaCon. And, uh, they were like, we'll, we'll ship you this stuff. And you just ship it back. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to be responsible for that. <laughs> like, but new stuff. Yeah. Packs up really well and lays out and they had some cool oh, that's right. uh, LED rope integrated into the, uh, he had said yeah, on his show that, yeah, it just like it, before it was all bubble gum and, you know, and uh, dental floss holding everything together. And now it, it goes together a it bit all better. Like snaps and hooks that snap into cool. each other. It yeah, looked it, so, it, did it, you guys it, help put it away at then? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, so, and yeah. it went to, because I remember last year yeah. we helped them put it away yeah. and it was like, oh, everything no, has to. Broke down super easy. That and, is you cool. Know, to stack it like kinds. And, that is so cool. Yep. Yeah, they were even, this year it was nice because it was, pull this apart and make a pile of that, pull this apart and make a pile of that, pull this apart and make a pile of that. And they had it like the four, five quadrant, six quadrants of the board, each one was kind of its own crate. Yeah. Just you know, I got its own tub. And it was really neat. Yeah. I think they do a lot to bring people, like they run that event every year. They do a lot to bring people, like they deserve some kind of award for this. So I think so. Yeah. I yeah. I absolutely. I want to think on that. Yeah. Anyway, Saturday was an incredible long day, four games in the day, but four really fun, really satisfying games that I survived all four of them and had just an amazing day of gaming. That was definitely like, this is the day I wanted to go as your throat is had an amazing day as your voice so, is going. Yeah. And I couldn't talk the entire day. So <laughs> it was, like, it, I think it was in between was when we got to catch up with, with Dan. Yeah. Yeah. We, That's right. Uh, between these two events at our quick, quick dinner, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Got, that was our, got a quick catch up with who was dominating at blood bowl at that point. Yeah, yeah. Dan Boyd caught up with him for 45 minutes or so. Yeah. And got the good for, news for the 40 K bad cast. Yeah. Incoming, uh, Boyd spawn and <laughs> Boyd spawn. <laughs> uh, Boyd spawn. Uh, well, very cool. Very cool. And then Sunday was, uh, the, uh, get out of Dodge or, well, well late, we had a late flight. Yeah, we had a really late flight. So Sunday for me, I'll go real quick was, uh, Sunday for me was my big like walk. Oh, so I would say first thing, Dave Taylor and I were supposed to play a small game of 40 K okay. on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I was actually surprised. Like I saw that he had played again. We, yeah. You and I were watching his live stream the other day. I, yeah. was, I, I was like, how often are you playing actual 40 K? So he they usually doesn't, they did their big tale of four warlords that yeah. they've been painting up towards. That was their big showcase Saturday. And they were playing the game until 2 AM. And then like Dave, didn't get to bed till 3 a.m. Oh and then God. like slept poorly. So he sent me a message early it's like, I can't Sunday. He's like, I, uh, yeah, not happening <laughs> next, <laughs> next year, enough. next con. Um, so, so we'll get a game in next time, but we all got together for breakfast. We, uh, went to, I don't remember what it's called. Huckleberry, something like that. Yeah. It was one of our, we had one of Wild those Bear. amazing Wild drivers Bears. who knew everything about yeah. everything. Um, this is two years in a row. I've gotten one of those and they're great. And I'm, it sounds when I say everything about everything, it sounds negative, but it's great. They tell you, no, go right. here, don't go here, get right. this, don't go there. In the best possible way. Yeah. So we went and grabbed breakfast with, uh, it's the whole crew. Yeah. yeah we all Yeah. Went Adon and Campos and Cheyenne nice. And, nice. and Aaron and I yeah. guess, and Aaron. yeah, Sky and Craig were not there. Right. Um, so that was Sunday, late Sunday morning. Yeah. We we were both like, okay, that was that was a good day. So let's start our chill day. And so, then you did the vendor hall. Yeah, after demos. breakfast, I was walking around the vendor hall, and this was me really just diving into the uh, skirmish game set, see what else is out there. Uh, ended up talking with James Hewitt for like forty five minutes, going, I uh, watched him run a demo for somebody else, and I was like, I'm not going to make you run another demo of this. But then I just talked to him about some design stuff, and um, and, and had a, a just great time chatting, catching up with him uh, briefly over that stuff. 
stuff. Um, and then wandering the hall, uh, ended up meeting Gav Thorpe, who oh, obviously nice. I've known of and yeah. like been reading about him. And like, he was the kid in white dwarf when I was the like even younger kid growing right. up. So like now seeing him Gav's super his, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we were, he was asking about you and like, yeah, we just, it was a great time of, this, I, I guess this is the closest like fanboy moment that I had out of the con of like, I had never met him in person, but I've obviously I've known of him and like been familiar yeah. with um, his work and just his involvement with things, especially reading the white dwarf battle reports and things like that in the nineties. Yeah. Um, so finally like making the connection was a pretty, pretty cool moment. That's and talking awesome. about um, the new game that him and Andy and um, I took I, him and Alan Bly and a couple other people out to dinner nice. one year yeah. when I went out yeah. there. And yeah, he's such a lovely guy. Yeah. And then I got to uh, my buddy Tom that I mentioned earlier has a really uh, just lovely little line of very cute little goblins. Uh -huh. And he wants to develop a game around them. Um, and so he got to take me through his his alpha in progress. Yeah. yeah. Um, but his production level because artist is pretty stinking high um, and it's the game is fun because it's about goblins running amok as opposed to like, let's fight and kill each other. Right. So you're trying to steal vegetables out of a halfling's crop. Amazing. And then run away. I'm and already the, in. The, the corgi who's watching the oh my God. farm is getting alerted as you're coming in, causing mischief. And then he's going to chase after you and you got to get the veggies and get it. So I was able to give him some, some feedback on. Shell on is his, already going to buy this. Yeah. Game. Um, maximum shenanigans. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll awesome. make sure we get a link in the show notes, uh, to Please. his, uh, used to be effigy miniatures. I think he has changed the the name of his company, but, uh, but yeah, just, just super fun little character full models and it's early on. I don't know when, yeah. when he wants yeah, to, yeah. you know, I think he was saying fingers crossed, maybe next year he could have a little something ready to go oh for God, Depcon, shell, but shell would be in on that <laughs> but, especially as soon as you said the corgi yeah <laughs> yeah it was it so, was so fun and so special when it's somebody that's a friend of yours that you've yeah, known for years that yeah. has is bringing all of their just fun little whimsical models they sculpt ideas, to this yeah. to this game um and was very excited about i think there's room right now in the hobby for games that aren't just about blowing each other up. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's actually a very unique take on something. Yeah. yeah. So it, that was, that was my last day. And then the last, for me, the last, like, oh, that was rad piece was going to the airport, which sounds weird. Yeah. Um, no, that was awesome. So we all, everybody's flight seemed to be out at these same late flights. Funny enough, uh, as I was going through the, the TSA check-in, I didn't have pre-boarding. Uh, so I did walk through the, the pedest, the, the commoners line. Mm -hmm. Um, but one row over for me was Dan Boyd. So we did the, like, couldn't really talk to each other, but kept walking by like, Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. <buddy. laughs> yeah. um, but then after that, we all met at our gate. And it was not only our kind of local extended crew, yeah. Um, but then Dan Osborne, who I had yeah. never actually sat and oh, met, he's, he's a great which guy. was yeah. weird. Super nice. I mean, Josh said it right away. He's like, yeah, somehow your guys' friend circles like within the hobby really overlap, but you just haven't. Dan uh, is also doing a class on mm -hmm. painting a Titan. Mm -hmm. He'll be in Santa Cruz. A night or a Titan. I think it's a night. A night. Yeah. yeah. I think. Up, up, uh, there if you're on our Facebook group, I think he, he was just talking to me yesterday and he said, Oh, do you mind if I post this? And no, please do. I'll, I'll make sure we pin that post, uh, for the dates and times. Cause I think they still have a few openings. So yeah. dude, that yeah. guy knows how to paint yeah. and yeah. knows how to teach yeah. painting. Yeah. So we're yeah. supposed to uh, throw down for a game of Titanicus when he's in town. So yeah, he's, yeah. he's cool. Over that he is super cool. Yeah. So we ended up, my wife and I actually were in Portland last week and that's yeah. his stomping grounds. And so he was checking in on me the whole time. We had a very whirlwind, just a couple day trip I saw that. to sightsee. Uh, but the whole time we were there, he was checking in and giving us recommendations and just, yeah, that's really, and so there was a whole group of, I mean, a half a dozen of us sitting at the gate, yeah, just uh, uh, Dan Roberts, Dan Roberts was <laughs> there. I, none of us. Yeah. I, I didn't like everybody was like, I ran into him for Sunday, nine years straight. And like, and we I was looked like, at each other and we were, actually at the uh i think it was at the fallout game like we looked at each other and like look back and they're like oh hey like <laughs> somebody who, he lives in los gatos so yeah. like we've known each other for i don't know 10 years also that's so funny so we had one of those gatherings of folks yeah. at the at the airport right yeah. before we Ivan left. was on our flight we got to see Ivan a bunch during the con mm -hmm. uh, his buddy christian was there there was a bunch of uh golden golden demon painting drama which was uh interesting to, to overhear some of it yeah and there always is there's there a guy from gary con i think you ended up talking oh, to yeah. quite a bit it was it a was san jose like, oh, guy who had been up guys? at gary con <laughs> like tom yeah. no, no no funny enough not tom <laughs> because tom was <laughs> yeah. at gary con yeah. um 
yeah so it was another one of those and then josh's bad travel mojo whammied us and we got in a little later um yeah. but it was it wasn't a big deal we had a, an hour hour and a half had delay change planes completely whatever that we got whatever plane we're supposed to be on just didn't happen on our so, flight yeah. to to and i'll talk about this in our patreon episode but on our flight out to, to sydney we flew from san francisco to honolulu got on the plane and then an hour goes by and they're like, oh, you know, there's this problem we're working on. They, they couldn't get fuel. Like they were like three quarters of the way th through the fuel and then something was, they had to fix the valve or something and they couldn't get it done. And then it got to the point where it's like, now they can't do the flight. And so everybody get off and they put us in a hotel for the night. And Enjoy a night in Hawaii. It would, look, there's rougher places to be <laughs> stuck. So Shell and I went to monkey pod and I got cranked on uh <laughs> on uh mike's hard no on on uh it's called back they're my ties <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. That, mm -hmm. that'll do it that that is my ties that will do it awesome that's a lot yeah. of rum and sugar yep, yep. that'll so, do it anyway yeah it was it that was not our only flight drama this whole time too so nine flights in yeah, three you're, weeks yeah, yeah you're down yeah. you're gonna reach some so anyway um this sounds amazing yeah it, it sounds amazing i have a couple questions left but let's do this. Let's take a short break. We'll come back to close out the show. I'll ask my questions there and, uh, and then we'll call it, call it an episode. So, all right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. We're, we're closing out the show here. This is, it's funny when you call a two plus hour show short, but <laughs> our shows Comparatively. Tend, tend to run about three hours, but I did have a few questions left for you guys, um, about Adepticon and, and so, um, and some of these, I think, you know, I prepared before we had the discussion. So I think you kind of answered some of them already. Um, what has been the best that Depticon you've attended so far? Well, I, oh, unfortunately I've only been to two. So okay, last so year and this year, last year or uh, this year, high, you know, high contention on both. They yeah. were both amazing shows. Um, I, I would probably tip this year just a little bit ahead of it, largely because we had so many people there, so much good time yeah. of like just that in between downtime of just being able to hang out and catch up. And again, just having my network expanded so much in the last year, year and a half, two years, even since last Adepticon. I think that's the magic um, of it. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, my, my friend network there is quite large and like hanging around, um, like part of the day I was wondering on Sunday, I was hanging out with sky and like, he has connections with all the people on like the vendor side of things and like more of yeah. the artist side that he's setting up classes for and like just, um, all, all the different aspects of the hobby coming together and such a, just a really good solid group of dudes and some amazing games. Um, Jody, what are yeah, your, was, your thoughts? This is your second, third third yeah. this is third um as wonderful as it was to have Aaliyah join me last year uh no it was this year this year was 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 my favorite and, it, and it's for a lot of the same reasons was okay. i mean getting to to have that in face time with with james hewitt who is somebody that i've known for years online on. and, and yeah. had a regular communication with for i think four years now uh, that's really special the golden demon this year was yeah. phenomenal seeing the pictures yeah w it was pretty impressive and yeah, I mean it's always impressive. Oh. Uh, I was blown away this year. Emery, yes, yes submitted. Yeah. Okay, yeah, submitted, uh, and I think he got a like recognition thing for it. But his was the uh, the the Adeptus Mechanicus guy sp power washing the power washing of the, the uh, dread Redemptor Dreadnought. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, he really sent that to me in advance. He yeah. was like, "Oh, look what I'm working on." I'm like. Oh my God, this is brilliant. Yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. And um, I saw another show. Oh, who was it? Uh, somebody was, was looking at it on YouTube and, and Rogue they, Hobbies, I know, gave it a shout out also. It might've been Rogue Hobbies. I think it was. And she was saying she could, at first she was trying to figure out how the thing was away from the power washing right. thing, but it's actually attached to them. To the it's clever. Yeah. Yeah. It's clever. Yeah. yeah. It's super clever. Yeah, but, that's, that's a very fun piece. But as a person who has played Power Wash Simulator, <laughs> and then they released the Warhammer thing for Power Wash, since so I reinstalled it to play that, <laughs> I had an immense appreciation for that his model. Super I, fun. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. He put in like four pieces, so he was just painting away. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, super, he's so such a great guy. guy. Yeah, so um, okay, uh, that's it's interesting too. Even though Leo wasn't there. Aaliyah had a lot of fun. She did. Awesome. And it was just, it, that was a wildly different experience to do it 
to, to be there with her versus this year, um, to be there with, with my other partner in crime. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, this year, goals. this year for sure is what, what about next year? You guys going to go next year? You're not. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. The, the only caveat for me is I'm going to be in Alaska like the week before. So uh-huh. unless there's some weird thing of yeah. travel scheduling, like I will, if I can't be there, stuck I will in an iceberg, absolutely be like there. Captain yes. America. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. March is always rough, but uh, thankfully my, my work next year should be the same as my work this year. So I think I can uh, tap on the, the work homie hubby, Matt, and uh, he, he nice. covered for me. So, yeah. well, this is uh we're okay. Yeah. This is always my birthday weekend that it is. Yeah. So um, it's a good excuse. To yeah. Go. So, um, and shell always wants to go. So we, both of us will be there next year. So now that we got this out of our system. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I, I'm, 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 so jealous, but at the same time, I had a great time, you know, in, in, in Australia, I got to see a lot of stuff I hadn't seen before. And we'll talk more about that on Patreon, but, um, but yeah, I'm really glad you guys had a good time. I'm really, really glad. And and I'm jealous. Fantastic. Fantastic show. Quick shout out to one of our listeners that we didn't mention in there. Jose. Yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. Who got awarded is also one of Colin's kind of Stude, Colin Ward's students or works with Colin yeah. on, on his craft, uh, one best painted for the Horus Heresy Yep. Oh, nice. uh, with his yep. space wolves. And then, dude, that's a, that's an accomplishment because the Horus Heresy stuff is usually off. Yeah, and anyway, his stuff was beautiful. That's, he yeah, uh, was also the first person who, I don't know how, but he called me out across a room to like come and say hello. Um, cool. Yeah. Like I've, I've gotten recognized like once I'm standing with it, but like from across the room heard, Hey Jody. And like turned and like some guy yeah. I don't know yeah. comes like, around hey, and, and it was nice just guy in person the too. most like just effervescent so, like charming yeah. like just excited and he was literally literally shaking when because he was so excited that he'd won <laughs> like he was showing his amazing. models and I was like <laughs> that's so exciting and he was like look I'm still shaking <laughs> like he just the cool, yeah. it was that's like so cool a highlight for sure on a lot of levels to yeah. get to see him because I think when I saw him it was right after he'd won and he was like. You know what's yeah, funny? It was gorgeous. You got another call it too. It was uh, when Golden Demon entry, I believe. Uh, I got an honorable, an honorable wow. mention, mm-hmm. and uh, Rich Burrell for his night. He put it in. He got either oh, I saw that. or honorable also. I yeah, a lot that. of folks and he got in some the good feedback. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's funny you talk about him calling you out across the room, and I've told this story before where somebody came up to me. I don't remember who it was, and we were talking about what they're working on, and I go, "Oh, well, I'm working on this." And they're like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> like I, I listen to the show because we put it all out there, like right. what we're doing, we put it all out there. So I, I will, I will share this. We were, when we were in Australia, we went to the Australia zoo, which is um, up near this place called sunshine coast. And that is the zoo that like Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter started, mm-hmm. right? He and his, I, I don't know if he started or his family did, but he ran it for many years. His wife, Terry uh, and their kids now run it. So that's Bendy and, uh, her husband, uh, Chandler, and I'm drawing a blank on Steve Irwin's son's name at the moment. But <clears throat> for us, well, for Shell, Shell's big time into zoos. Like that is royalty mm-hmm. like, for her. That zoo, like uh, every time we go to see, she's like, oh, you know, they have a zoo. And I'm like, oh, God, you and the zoos. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no way we were not going to the zoo because it's like the crown jewel of zoos for her. And, and, it, and not being a zoo guy, I will tell you it was really cool like um i'm not really an art guy but then i went to the louvre and i was like oh, oh. yeah oh <laughs> uh-huh. I've, i know what that is i've seen that i've seen that like this was a really incredible experience and the people at the zoo so friendly and just so excited to be there and working there with the animals and stuff so anyway, we get we get to the end of the day at the zoo and it's been a long day we've walked a lot it's hot uh humid and um Shell says, oh, do you want to go to uh, get some dinner? There's a restaurant owned by the zoo, which is outside the zoo and attached to like a bungalows that you can rent to stay there. And they're quite pricey. And I said, well, I'm not super hungry, but why don't we go see what's there? We'll have a drink or whatever. So we get there and uh, we're the only two people in the restaurant. It's a lovely restaurant. Uh, We have some drinks and we have a little bit of snacks and, and I get up to go to the bar to pay the tab and I'm standing there and, and I see like this cameraman walk in, which <laughs> immediately I think of Josh because oh this uh-huh. guy's got like, you know, it's a legitimate like video camera, not just like something I'd, I don't. 
And then another guy comes in and I can see they're like framing some shots and stuff like, oh, they're doing promo material for the, for the zoo in the restaurant and sure. so I could put out whatever. And next thing I know, I see this guy walk in and I'm like, that looks a lot like Bindi Irwin's husband. And then sure enough, Bindi Irwin comes walking in and they're like filming, like they're going to film this thing where they're talking to the gal that is the hostess. And well, how would you normally see people? Oh, well we do this and I'd walk you over here. Okay. Just do that. Just be yourself. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm kind of, I see this and like I yell across the, the uh, restaurant to Shell. I go, Shell. And she like, she's looking at her phone. She kind of looks up. I go, come here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she like walks over and then she sees me and she's like, Oh my God. Like she's, this is for her. Like this is the upper yeah. echelon of, you know, I don't know if we, if it's Henry Cavill for me, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like <clears throat> huh. zoo celebrities, eh? Yeah. yeah. And, and so, I mean, her family, that, yeah. that family has done so they, much for yeah. conservation. Yeah, Shell's yeah. a big conservationist. She went to school based on all that stuff in geology and conservation. So anyway, um, so we watch them kind of film this thing and Shell's just like, I can't believe this. You know, they're, this is really cool. And the camera guy and the other guy are kind of over talking and Bindi Irwin kind of turns around and looks at us and goes, Oh, so how are you guys doing? And Shell's like, really good. <laughs> you know? And like, and, and then she, she says, you know, I'm such a fan of you and your, and your, uh, your, your father. I was a huge fan of your father. And, and, uh, <laughs> Chandler goes, <clears throat> um, Oh, where are you guys from? And I said, well, we're from the U S we're, we're from California. And he goes, Oh yeah, I'm from Florida. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I mean, and, and, I, and I immediately uh -huh. was Full like, circle. yeah, I immediately was like, Oh, Oh yeah. I mean, because I just know this cause shell follows them. Sure. And, sure. Yeah. The, hadn't, hadn't stopped talking about them the whole, you know, visit to the zoo. And so I'm like, yeah, I know you're from Florida, you know, okay. You know and I'm like? And I was like, Oh, that was rude. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, um, I'm like, well, you know, how do you like living here and blah, blah, blah. And, and so then finally I'm like, Hey, can, can we get a picture with you? Like shell wasn't going to ask. And I'm like this, you're not going to get this opportunity yeah, sure. again. And she's like, yeah. And she gave shell a hug and we took a picture. I took a picture of them. Okay, great. We got to go. So we leave and shell just bursts into tears. <laughs> she gets out the door. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> she was so excited. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And that was like near the beginning of our trip. Yeah. So it was yeah. just like, Oh my God, all this downhill from there. Off to a great <laughs> start. No, tone setter. There it is. Yeah. So anyway, all right. Well, you know, guys, thanks for sharing your experiences uh, with Adepticon. Super appreciate it. Um, I, again, I'm super yeah. jealous. The only thing that could have made it better was if I had my voice and had you been. Aw. <laughs> yeah. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, you were, you were missed. Your, your, your name you was there, often mentioned. Would have been there, and then it would have been cool. <laughs> also, you know, yeah. But what, what, I'm sorry. What did you say? No, you were you were mentioned a lot. If you, if you oh, haven't okay. already heard it, you I were haven't. you were often asked after, yeah, and absolutely, and your your presence was was noted. Oh, or your well, lack, thank you, of presence was noted. Well, I'll but be there next year. Also, everybody went like. But he's in Australia. I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, you know, <laughs> life's rough. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, during Dave Taylor's stream last night, he was like, oh, you're back from, we got to, and I said, we got to talk about Australia. He goes, yeah, we do. <laughs> he being from Australia. Yes. And we saw the whole country almost, almost. It's a big, country. all of it. The whole thing. All well, it's the coast. Months. <laughs> we did the flyover states. Did you make it to Tasmania? <laughs> <clears throat> no, but I did see a Tasmanian devil. <laughs> did you go on a walkabout? <laughs> I did. Oh, so uh, okay. quite a bit. So you're changed, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, listen, uh, then I guess we'll wrap it up. Uh, don't forget. We have a YouTube channel. We have a Facebook group. I meant to read, but we'll do it next time. We've gotten a lot of great reviews yeah, recently yeah. and I super appreciate everybody who's who's left reviews recently for us Absolutely. Uh, uh, it's great on iTunes. Yeah. Yep. I sent them all over to Josh so he could, he could see them. Uh, but um, we'll read a couple of those out next episode as well. I think I'll just continue to read a few of them out as each episode going forward. Um, uh, you know, we have uh, Table War Charities. I'll be at Nova Open uh, helping support them. Um, Herrick Games, we're going to next weekend, the 20th, not this weekend, but next weekend, they're moving to their bigger facility. I'm going to go up there for a few hours yep. and help help yep. them move and and lend some more muscle. Yeah. Jerry and I uh, yeah. had the <laughs> the pleasure of unloading uh, the 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 box the truck showed wall. up with all the slat wall and this. Oh boy. Things, I don't know how many hundred plus. 
pound easily. Like those things are. It was, I'm glad we were there. They're probably to help. 150 pounds per wall. The way that they're packaged because oh they're like God. covered in wood in order to protect the slat wall inside. So it was like a three man job of unloading these because the guy. It's good thing you guy pulled up there. and he's like, "Do you have a forklift?" We're like, "No." no. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen this town? Yeah, <laughs> it's small. Anyway, Herrick Games. Uh, they're a great supporter of the show as well. So um, please take a look at them. We'll. As always, there's a link in the in the show notes to to Herrick Games and uh, patrons get discounts uh, yep. through Herrick Games. Extra discounts on top of their already discounted GW price. That's right. That's right. So uh, yeah, and we yeah we got a Patreon. So okay, well um, I think that's it. I think we'll just wrap it up from there. So uh, until next time, this is Carl. This is Josh. This is Jody, and we're coming to you from the Astronomicon, where sometimes you miss out, but you really make out. If you're not at AdeptCon, you're at FOMO. (laughs) And it's not just catchy song lyrics. We wish you were here. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much. This episode of The Independent Characters is protected by the Creative Commons license. If you have further questions as to its use, you can find information on the front page at theindependentcharacters.com.